yeah as i was saying html is used to so if even if you add a html field to a form right my html field save uh incorrect date time value <laughs> vehicle uh, let's add a html field summary it save do i have console open console is console where is the html field that we added right you cannot see because it's empty you have to manually inject html so that you can do using car frm dot set uh, that value also works as html is there something i don't know wait dog dot uh, i don't recall there is an easy way to do this i have done it before hmm? uh, set wrapper get field okay yeah, yeah i now now i recall get field then you tell it which field do you want so what did we name our uh, html field summary we can do summary right and then wrapper dot inner html or i think html not what is it append simple but you can think you can embed a whole web page if you want to see from the script side i just appended this html so you can add anything append anything so you can think of what in form builder would have happened in form builder it would have mounted a whole view js but an interesting field <laughs> there is one more field since we are uh, waiting for them button field we were discussing that so suppose i want a button in the form itself right so let's add a button here i uh, will call it like this is the label of the button get summary okay let's connect this to concepts hit save go to vehicle list right so on get summary it should render the summary so how do you attach to the event listener of this thing so you just go back to your js file client script uh, what was the page vehicle right so we have hidden the sidebar because we didn't like it <laughs> uh, and here you can just give the name of the button what was the name of the button get underscore summary so you can now guess what it will generate so get underscore summary and then you can say whatever we wrote in the javascript console right this thing yeah frm car frm will become frm and here it will say here is your summary okay let's try it now yeah it works so two new fields there are many more fields if you want to explore there is color field there is a rich text editor text editor field and yeah play around barcode code so code basically if you tell it what language you have in the options it will syntax highlight that code <laughs> so if i say my let's give it a label my python code and you in the options you say i think py no not py what is the name of that python
अमाउंट कैपिटल भी बिकॉज आई नेवर डन पाइथन नो आई डन जीएस लेट्स ट्राइ जीएस नो ओके वेट सो वी कैन चेक द डॉक्स कोड फील्ड रापे सेट टू पाइथन ओके कैपिटल पी Syntax salienty. Import OS. Paint this. So many hidden things in the framework. You explore, you find this stuff. <laughs> But yeah, interesting. Let's remove this. Summary we can keep. So yeah, we can start with the simplest topic of all, like the shortest one today. Uh, that's number zero, single doc types. So till now, how many different varieties of doc types we saw? normal doc types not child not submittable then we saw submittable doc types then we saw child child doc types which don't exist in isolation but they can be embedded as table in other doc types and what fields does it have parent parent type field we saw in the database right that's how it knows about its parent the parent doesn't know about the children yeah and so we implemented this uh, right booking right that was a submittable doc type and in there we had rate total amount so yesterday we wrote the javascript as well as the logic to handle everything so total amount gets calculated in real time as well as in the back end uh, we handle child tables events as well so rate right so every time we have to set rate so what if we have some standard rate somewhere in the settings configurations that the user can set and that is used for every ride booking that is one way to do it other is it to set in the vehicle so if he charges different for different vehicles then that is the case but since we want to learn single doc types we'll go in a single configuration way so what single doc types are single doc types are as the name suggests single there is just one entry for it so when you create a doc type you get a list view there are multiple doc documents in one doc type right single doc types there one single ton so there is no um, what do you say database table for it we'll see so let's go to doc type and create a single doc type you'll see how it looks so let's call it rentals settings usually settings is the indicates that it's a single doc type so module will be rentals then i'll just check this checkbox is single right single doc types ha only have one record no tables associated values are stored in tab singles yeah it tells what it is going to do let's create and let's add a new section so what field do we want the user to fill in standard rate uh, that can be float or currency standard rate we can do float this time and then the default i don't think yeah so now there is no go to rentals list right go to rental settings list is just a go to rental settings and you click it i will no no list view right it just has this single form just one item getting my point yeah so this is called a singleton basically no separate tab rental settings was created so if even we go to maria db right bench dash dash site maria db let me just zoom in yeah select 
star from tab rental settings yeah <laughs> rental setting there is no doc type like this right if it were a normal doc type or a child doc type it would have created a table behind the scene but every single doc type has a single table that is called tab singles and everything is stored in that for any single doc type in the system system settings website settings these are all our single doc types right to so select star from tab singles see what's the name of the single doc type right what field and what value there are just three columns in this very simple so it's just taking whatever rate we said right the rate field and adding it here along with our doc type name so if you scroll down or we can do this where yeah in the back end yes it is all stored as text and frappe will parse it when it either gets or sets it will handle the thing jason fine meta is already there right so when you created a single doc type the files so we created a portal yesterday see uh, rental settings it also has json js py this all everything still works but not separate database table yeah 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 same 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 so you can have this uh, so there is same controller right yeah get single doc the api changes a little get doc also works but you have to give the name as the doc type and doc type as the doc type so both same yeah <laughs> but i i recommend get single doc it it clearly says you are getting a single doc make sense so everything still works the main difference it doesn't have a separate database table but because it doesn't need multiple records and here when you do where doc type equal to the name of the doc type what was it rentals settings i should have called it rental settings okay what is the name of the column doc type correct right hmm no no because we didn't set a value now we have a value so then it created some other fields as well so the one we set is this one the one we created is this one these are all stored as text strings and frappe will parse it based on whatever type you set so this will be passed as float this will be date time right cool so this was single doc types so these are used for like some configuration and now if i want to get the standard rate while i am calculating stuff right where did we do the calculation right booking dot py here you can if not rate use the standard rate right stand uh, self dot rate equal to as i said i always like to play around in console so we can say frappe dot get single value if you just want one value or if you want the whole single doc type you can say get singles uh, single doc let's get the value of rental no yeah rentals settings now i'm regretting the name standard rate db dot create single value right <laughs> yeah it's db dot Twenty point zero, correct. And now I can copy paste it here. Yeah.
it will tell you it doesn't exist yeah yeah, yeah there are validations in place that uh, take care of parsing and checking if the field exists cool so this is how like we did some more enhancement right now if there is no rate it will use the standard rate make sense yeah okay there are more apis related to singles you can check those so there is one more uh, that is used in a variety of places get a single uh, get singles dict i guess or db dot get single. yeah frappe dot db dot get singles dict so this will return rentals settings as a dictionary yeah um, yeah small question now let's assume that we have a use case mm -hmm. where one field mm -hmm. is thought visible or not visible or mandatory or not mandatory mm -hmm. based on uh, a configuration in a single doc type so assuming that i have uh, for example mandate rate for example or hide rate uh, is it possible to change these properties dynamically to set them pro uh, dynamically in the doc type no no can you repeat okay so in the doc type you can configure certain properties certain fields mm -hmm. to be mandatory or hidden or whatever right yeah like now the way we're doing it only is a uh, in the side panel as a checkbox yeah is there a way to make this programmatic or make it linked to a sitting in a single um, in a single doc type so i have for example in that doc type i will create for example mandate a vehicle for example mm -hmm. and then if i have that checked then in that doc type you have to enter a vehicle yeah now you can yesterday we'll, we learned about the client script right there you can say on setup like before load or setup whatever hooks we have available in the js right there you can fetch the value from tab singles and then we have a javascript api so i'll show you so suppose i want to make this mandatory dynamically from the script so cur frm dot set df property right we'll say which field so standard uh, to a zoom in yeah standard rate and we want to set mandatory right so the name of that property is iqd to 1 in the backend anyways you can get the single and validate right so first this should do in the backend of course it should check if it is mandatory in the settings throw I was telling about if you want to do it in front end as well. Yeah. So set DF property is very cool. So suppose you have uh, a select field and you want to pop populate its options dynamically. Yes. So you can set DF property of options. Yeah. So if you saw the notification doc type, when you selected a doc type, then it showed you the, all the date fields in the select. That is how it is achieved. Set DF property. Yeah. Makes sense? So this was a single doc type mostly into setting system settings. Uh, not. Yeah, even this is a single doc type. System console is also a single doc type. <laughs> system settings, yeah. This is a single doc type for setting. Because you directly go to the setting, there is no list view because no multiple records. Yeah, and everything is stored in which doc which table? tab singles yeah and we just saw how it is stored uh one thing you might notice with uh, like notice what in when we did get singles dict right and when we did directly the get value get single value did you notice what's the standard rate here 20.0 what's the standard rate here so get singles did doesn't process your this uh, what do you say inputs it just fetches from the backend and gives you but if you do get single value or uh, even get single doc it will parse 
so that difference you have to keep in mind but yeah mostly you will use either single value or uh, get single uh, is it doc or just get single i don't remember let's try rental settings yeah it's get single so now if you say standard standard rate see so that's the major difference between get singles faster but doesn't give you the parsed output this is a bit slower because it will parse uh, slow we can't call it slow but yeah if you have some use case like that then because it will pass each field right so if you have a lot of fields maybe you want to handle yourself and i don't know there can be use cases that's why it exists so mostly advanced stuff but yeah you just have to remember get single value that gives you one value from a single doc type and get single which gives you the whole single document cool Mm, you can yeah <laughs> ah okay we are low on time so wait session dot no no not i don't think in user it is in uh, no no there is one I've seen it somewhere, but I will have to look. Mm, something. Let's search role. User roles. Yeah. Yeah. Then you can say if this includes. Yeah, so like I, what I will recommend is do frappe dot and just go over this. Same is for curve form dot and then just go over what all you have available. You have so much assigned to automatically you can assign from the script. You can get the fields as a dictionary if you want to process a lot of stuff. Mm. That's why I said, right? First backend, then redundancy in the front end. So even if you change the front end, you can't fool the backend. That's very important. So everything logic validations should go in the backend first, and then just to enhance the user experience, you can add it in the front end. Cool. Let's. Yeah. Open a bench. That's the site. Company dot com console rabbit dot db dot set value salary one million. <laughs> okay, so we'll go to rentals. Now we have it open here. So the next big topic is hooks dot py file. When you say this is customizable, ERP next is very customizable. Actually, this is coming from this guy, the framework, right? So framework brings the capability of customizations, customized form, server script, custom fields, whatever you see related to customization, it is power of framework. So not tied to ERP next. So there is this hooks.py file. So whatever customizations you can't do from UI, right? You can do from here. So we'll start with a few. So these are two basic hooks. So you can inject your own CSS and JavaScript file in the desk. Suppose you want to change the theme. People mostly use this one for changing the theme. Right. And JS also, if you want to run some JavaScript. So <laughs> this has a particular use case. I can show you like recently uh, Nikhil used this for a very nice, <laughs> what do you say? Use case. I'll show you. So you want to inject some JavaScript. He basically injected whole react using that in the desk and I'll show you the 
uh, in Discord always, always updating. I don't know what they bring with the upgrade. More blot. Yeah. Okay. Five updates. Come on. Okay, I don't want to know. This. <laughs> he injected this whole... <laughs> Chat interface right in desk using that. So you can see video. See. So this is desk, but he, this is react, this part. But yeah, so you can see what people, other people are doing with the framework. So this hooks, although look very simple, but they make something's very flexible right C css javascript and similarly you have you can inject stuff in the web bundle that will be whenever you extend from web.html remember web.html if you want to extend its css and javascript whoever extends from it will get this file same you have web form right so you can tell what doc which doc types web form you want to include the JS, right? This is how it works. Yeah. Mm, similarly, page is there. So we will go over four important ones. Then you can figure out the rest based on the use case you might have. Even if I tell everything, like either you will forget it, you won't find use, but it's better to like whenever the use case arises and you think that you need to edit the core, so there is a hint, this gives a hint that, okay, you might want to look into hooks.py file, right? So let's say, so there is home page, you can set, uh, what is happening? Yeah, so you can set the home page. So it, as you can see, there is some documentation. It will override website settings. Visible? Yeah. Yeah, the the installed, the one, yeah, preference. Similarly, you can have role-based homepage. So we'll discuss roles and permissions after this, but there is a role permission management system in Frappe built in. So you can have that, okay, this guy's administrator and you can say administrator have this homepage. Salesperson has this homepage. That can be defined here. Okay. Uh, Generators are advanced. You can extend the Jinja that Frappe has. So we were able to do Frappe dot uh, session dot user, right? So some stuff is already available in your Jinja files, but you can extend that and add your own methods. I have a blog on this. If you want to check out uh, in the Build with Suzanne blog, you will find this how to extend Jinja using filters, etc. Yeah. So this is why it is called hooks. See, because you can hook your own code into some life cycle of the framework. So here it says, before install, run this dotted function. So whenever your app is installed, before that this function will be run. After your app is installed, you can define a function to run. So you are hooking into different global events of the framework. There you were hooking into, okay, whenever the doc type is validated or before save you do this, you do that. This is even higher level than that, right? So you can tell, okay, before my app is installed, run this. Maybe you want to do some setup. After my app is installed, do this. After my app is uninstalled, do this. Before my app is uninstalled, do this. Maybe you want to do some cleanup, right? More, more, many, many more. And many are not documented here in this page, by the way. Caps lock. Before app install, after app install, uh, before app uninstall, a lot of it. Permission we'll look at later. Override doc type class. This is an interesting one. So 
you know there is a doc type class right so when you created the vehicle doc type it gave you vehicle dot py which had a vehicle class similarly all doc types in framework and erp next have sales invoice will have a sales invoice class you can from your app completely override that class you can write a new class that will override it not extend extend will come how you can extend it but this will override that class yeah so suppose you want to write your own vehicle class with your own validations own logic everything right this is useful so you can tell the doc type name and then the dotted path dotted paths are very important in framework so everywhere it's a convention that you can write dotted path and you will find that class completely purchase invoice yeah or you can use inheritance inherit from the original <laughs> add more yeah that is also possible python has inheritance so your class can inherit from purchase invoice and then you add additional controllers or whatever you want but there is an easier way to do it like if you just want to extend the hooks that is the next thing but yeah so you you see the pattern what it is letting you do core core pieces it is letting you hook into even swap the whole classes so very powerful hooks dot pyfi so let's try this one the other one so there is doc events okay so doc events so uh, if you recall we set the full name in before save of which doc type driver doc type right because we had access to the py file but what if i want to run something whenever a new web form is submitted like or like not web form what was the name of the ride booking and it is not part of our code or maybe we have erp next installed and we want to run some code on sales invoice submit additional code of python how do you do that because we don't have the py dot py file in our app right it is belongs to some other app this will let you do that so you can say star means all if you want to run all all doc types go ahead but everything is a doc type so it will run on any doc type changes so yeah just touch this only when you know what you are doing it will slow the system down if you do something too much in this right so let's say i want to before insert of to do right not to do to do and you get give it the dotted path so let's do something so you can create a file anywhere maybe i'll use the same api and write one more function print or we can be throw emoji wrap a dot throw that because we are leaving dubai so uh, let's give so see the dotted path it will be rentals dot api dot throw emoji so i will give that path to hooks dot py file rentals dot api dot throw emoji and now whenever a new to do is inserted like before before it is inserted to the database this code will be called so we are extending the hooks of that already exist in to do so let's try it i will go back let's create a to do no not <laughs> general to do yeah my to do okay throw emoji takes zero but two were given okay wait 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 so you have to give it doc yeah these are two things that frappe will pass to you so you can see what doc is there because when you are writing this inside the py file you have access to self this is your self and this is the event that was run so this will be before submit uh before insert now let's go back i hit save right <laughs> i 
I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Got my point? So you can inject your own code. Third party doc types. Yeah. After the before. So original and then yours. You are extending it. Original validations will still run. You are not overriding it. Here you are completely overriding that stuff. Here you are just attaching your own hook events. But if you throw it, it won't insert because it is before insert. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Both will run. Both will work. Again, install order. As a mostly it is install order. So in about you saw the order, right? That order. Yes. That is the install order. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, latest one will override every any any overrides that came before that. That doesn't generally happen. Just the before insert, you want to run before insert of the actual one or replace both inheritance. So you create your own class, inherit it from the actual to do. There you, if you name it validate and you don't, if you want to call the super, you can use the super keyword. It will run that before or after. So you can write your logic, then call super or call super, then write your logic. Make sense? So that is Python because that also document also is validated. So you are also overriding like uh, attaching that hooks, right? So you, hmm. yeah, same. Yeah, in the same. So, so you just like you're using a Python feature called inheritance to bring that logic in your class as well. But yeah, mostly people don't do it. They extend. Like most of the use cases is to extend. Uh, if you want to override, then that is like this part. Okay. Clear? Let's go to the next hook, which is scheduler event. We had a brief discussion on this, but not deep. So scheduler events, right? So we saw in proc file, there was a... there was this line. So there is this process that runs when scheduled. This is the process that's responsible for handling the scheduler events. Where did it go? Yeah, hooks.py file. Yeah. Right. So what will happen is you can tell Frappe. So let's remove this all uh, weekly. So you can give it a list of dotted paths that you want to run. So you can say weekly emoji or send emoji mail. Something like that or send payment reminders. Okay. So what this will do is this will go ahead and create a scheduled job type in the backend and your this function will be called weekly every week right so similarly we have daily hourly daily long weekly long so if so they have some different timeout so weekly long it has a longer timeout than weekly so if you you think that this job is going to take some long time, whatever you are running, send payment uh, reminders, you can add them to weekly long. Okay. And the most advanced one, if none of this suffices, right? You don't want weekly, you don't want hourly, or you don't want to uh, uh, say, because the daily one, it's default to 12am at night. 
maybe you want to send every wednesday 3:30 pm pretty advanced right every wednesday 3:30 pm so how do we do that so there is something called cron in uh, linux systems unix systems and cron tab so here is a cool tool that i use here you can define this pattern right which basically whatever i said in english so i have said what is it 3:30 pm every wednesday so right now it is 20 so it will be 3 will be 15 uh, and uh, how do i define 30 30 no 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 point i don't think work wait yeah yeah minute sorry at 5:30 on wednesday and you just take this expression right copy it here you add cron add this expression and then maybe now i send reminders every wednesday 3:30 30 pm this is very powerful perfect so c is capital for some reason uh, i have once gone into issue where i wrote all small and didn't work <laughs> but yeah so you can add multiple cron expression and a list of functions that you want to run so this will run 330 every wednesday I don't have, so can be here somewhere. I'm just it should exist because this is seeing the time of migration. So if this doesn't exist, right, and you try to migrate, I'll tell you what, where it uh, creates the schedule. Migrate. see it th didn't throw but it shows as a warning this is not a valid method has no attribute send payment reminder right so we'll fix that we'll run migrate again in this time ah uh, yeah it didn't give any warning but you can check from the ui what our schedule stuff is already there maybe some other app also defined some schedule jobs right you also defined scheduled job type list see this was the path we gave what was the frequency cron so these are coming from frappe if you see frappe also defines some cron job to sync some stuff clear out error logs etc etc so if you check this you will see when it is running the same cron expression right so at the time of migration frappe took your hook file and generated this doc type and here you can execute it as well right and check the logs didn't get executed wait enable oh no it is enable maybe because we are not doing anything <laughs> No, no. If you execute, also it works. This works. So let's uh, try. Uh -huh. Or it is not getting executed because it will only log it if it got executed. Yeah. So this brings us to the thing that how does this get executed, right? When does it get executed? So we have some processes here. If you'll see. proc file we have the scheduler so the scheduler will look okay now it is 5:30 3:30 and this is wednesday it's time to execute right so this will tell the background stuff that okay now go ahead and execute this this will give it to the workers these are the three guys you can define as many workers as you want there is some limit but yeah then they will take the job your dot api dot send email reminders and then they will execute it right so i think this is a 
good place to connect background jobs, so let's cover. <laughs> <laughs> the work is, how is the load balancing happening? Yeah, that's why I said, let's cover background jobs. Oh. Yeah. Uh, question, two questions. First of all, can we run the, uh, the bench, like the site, on uh, standard ports for HTTP and HTTPS? Saying yeah, in production it runs on AT. Okay, by default. And 443, yeah. Okay. You can, um, in production setup, you have to do that. Okay, and the other thing is, um, you remember when we did the um, sending out an email, a notification, mm -hmm. saying in a certain date, field, time of a doc type, after or before or something, we can send a, a notification, correct? Yeah, notification. Uh, can we do something, can we schedule something based on a doc type, for example, saying that um, standard, like after this doc type is approved, after three days, perform some logic. Something like that. So you have to write your own logic here. So that means so that after three days, right, mm -hmm. of some particular date. Mm -hmm. So you have to run every day. Okay. And so you have to check whether that now it has three okay. days have passed or not. Clear. And then you can if else everything works there. Okay. Clear. So yeah, you have to think in this way. So people ask me how do you verify OTP? Like OTP functions can be implemented using uh, some hooks and scheduler. Uh, so you want to expire some OTP codes. Oh, okay. Every uh, 30 minutes, maybe the code is valid for 30 minutes, you want to expire it. You can use the cache, that's much easier way. So with an expiry Redis cache you can use. But if you had to do it in database, you have to, some value you want to clean up after 30 minutes, right? So what you can do is, you run every minute and check whether 15 minutes have passed. Similar concept. You run every day and check if 3 days have passed. Okay, makes sense. Makes sense? Yeah. Similar, framework does the same. So it runs every day and it will check whether it is three days before or three days. Oh. Okay. Makes sense. Makes sense? So this is a general concept. So many in, use cases. In that sort of in that example, like if I have a duct type that will that I want to perform this on, presumably I will have my own hidden technical fields yeah. that I will hide from the, the user. Something like okay, job done as a flag to confirm that the job is done so I don't have to execute it again. Um, like no, no, that things like that. Yeah. So suppose uh, recently I had this send emails, mm -hmm. right? So I was running it every hour. So suppose it failed before three hours. So that job was somehow run this before three hours before this time field. Mm -hmm. That that's the job I have. So suppose it fails at that time. So it should retry the second time, right? Even if it is in the second hour yeah, of for some reason. So you can't exactly say three hours. In that case, you add a checkbox field that whether it was completed or not. So only run the job if that checkbox is not already checked. So you can add your fields and mark them checked. Yeah. I've done that in one of the use cases. So yeah, now background jobs. I like background jobs. But yeah, since this is a good connection point, it will give you a nice overview of how this scheduler and background connect. as a magnet visible to everyone okay so this worker right i'm drawing them as circles can you silent the phone button okay. thanks so worker worker dash one so let's call one, two, three. That's fine. The naming is up to us. Worker three. Here I have three workers and this is doing nothing but calling this uh, command bench worker. Then we are passing the logs, whatever the worker creates in different files. One means the normal exit code. Two means the error log will go in this Unix or Linux features, but mostly triggers bench worker and then frappe starts a worker that's it so now we have three workers here one two three one two three right and there is a scheduler this guy this is the process that looks is the time happened is the time happened when i want to run and suppose now it is exactly 
how much 15 30 that means 3 30 pm wednesday suppose now it is the time so scheduler will wake up it will say okay now it is time so these are the workers available and what do we want to run rentals dot api dot what was that send reminders or something send for brevity i'm writing this this i want to run and this will pass it to background jobs what this will do this will give it to background jobs to run because this is not happening in the web server thread this is working happening behind the scenes right so user doesn't have to open an instance there it just happens in the background and then it will check which worker is available so if this guy is busy so somehow i will show you where it is tracked whether a worker is busy or available maybe this is also busy this is guy this guy is free so this will pick up this job job worker make sense so this will pick up this job and execute that's it Yeah, these are separate threads. Uh, there is a good uh, refactor went now, so it forks the processes before some advanced concept that I am also not very clear of, but separate threads. Uh, watch uh, Ankush's video. Ankush came to my episode, episode 17 or 16, I guess. One of them, 17. So he explained this workers in even in depth how they work in framework but yeah so it will pick this job and execute it right so suppose this guy is also busy right so that job will remain in queue it will be in queue it will be waiting until someone becomes free and whenever any worker becomes free that guy will pick up the next job available right Makes sense. It's simple. It's not that complicated. Workers and jobs. That's it. And that happens in background. So scheduler only has one role to track the time. Okay. Is it time? So scheduler is not executing stuff. It is giving them to the background workers. And those guys execute it. Right. And we are using a package called Redis queue for this. Uh, RQ, RQ. So that uses Redis uh, this queue instance to keep the jobs yeah we are coming to that so suppose now i have a job so this three are busy this three are busy right and this job came in this job is probably going to take five seconds right and i have one more job that's going to take one hour so this this worker became free and maybe this was the job that came first and this was the job that came second. Assuming there is these two workers die for some reason. Right? Sad. But yeah. They die. This is the only worker we have. One hour job, five second job. Logically think which it should execute first. But workers don't have that logic. Yet. So first come, first serve. Q is FIFO, right? Q by definition is FIFO. So one hour it has to wait this. So this is why we have concept of different type of queues. We have a short queue. We have a default queue. And we have a long queue with different timeouts. So long has the maximum timeout. Default has less than that. Short has the least. So I'll show you where we define this and how do we do that. But three types are available and workers you can define that okay this worker will only handle short jobs then w2 you will only handle long jobs and default jobs both you can handle so now if those both come this guy becomes free he'll take yeah you have to mark that this is short right so you can tell frappe this is my job this is use the short queue for this. So then it will use which worker? 
the short worker. So now this one hour job you can mark long. So as a developer, you can do this. You will know that, okay, you have to generate 400 salary slips. It is going to be long. You are just syncing some stuff, sending some few SMSs that will be short, right? So that scheduler, as I said, right, monthly, long, monthly. Now understand the difference. What is the long here? Long is the queue type. Make sense? That's why I said, like, let's connect the dots. Scheduler is fine. What if I want to run on clock, click of a button? So I, I want to have a button that says schedule, schedule now or something like that. Run now in the background, but maybe it is generating 1000 sales invoices. So you can't do that directly. Okay, you will click the button and wait. Wait there on that page itself. Maybe you are importing 1 million records. You can't wait on that page. So that stuff, HTTP timeout will happen because there is a limit on how long you send a request to the server. This is the basic of web development. So you send a request, it sends you a response. So if you are doing it in the same, you are doing thousand submissions of sales invoices and keep the request waiting, it will time out. Right? So you get the request, you put it in background and return immediately. Right? So let's see that how we can do that on a click of a button. We want to schedule something that should run in the background, right? And there all we can define, okay, run in short queue, run in long queue. We'll see where it is visible and everything will connect. So these are called uh, workers and jobs. Clear? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you can just copy this line. So what I can do is I can comment this out. I'm commenting these three lines out. So now I, when I do bench start, right? What will happen? No workers will run, right? No workers are running. So nobody is there to handle any background jobs, zero workers, but I can start them separately. <laughs> so I'll go in the bench directory. I will copy this line and instead of putting the log some I'll just copy this part, paste it here. Wait, 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 wait. I shouldn't copy this part. This is something I did. So in Mac, there is some issue with background work. Now, see. Some issue, uh, I don't know, but this is what was actually going in the logs. Now it is showing right here. So suppose, now I execute something. There's some bug in the framework that I have not been able to figure out yet. So it says unknown column background jobs queue in fields list. Okay. Let's figure it out where it is coming from. Or oh, we are digressing this time. Hmm. Which one? This one. No, no, that's not an issue. This issue I've been facing. So, um, if you see, it says job okay, job okay, job okay. So it is picking up jobs and running, right? It is trying to at least, and if it fails, it is again trying. But what I will do is, I will close this. I will bring back the. Let's bring just two workers up. I will restart bench. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I had seven gigabyte of this. I will have to figure it out. <laughs> Yesterday we <laughs> deleted it. So two things, right? Two, two main concepts, workers and jobs. So to see the workers, you go into RQ worker list. Here you see. Two workers, both are busy with that bug, like whatever issue that is. So you can see busy. What queue types they handle? This one handles default, short, and no, you don't have to get that. Uh, so default, short, and long handles all three types. And
this also same right this has a peculiar interesting named field called last heartbeat <laughs> which means when was this guy last working right so total working time you can see how much utilization is there so a worker how much time is ideal versus busy right so how many successful jobs it did what is the current status so this is a virtual doc type so this is you won't find that rq worker table anywhere it is directly fetching from the redis queue similarly we have two workers where are they coming from this two make sense and now we have jobs rq job list uh, i have been facing this issue max specific by the way so we'll restart mm -hmm. do i have console open yeah background jobs page that we had it is now replaced with rq job uh, come on like as you can see schedule is active so now go back to day one we were discussing right after you created a site there was a line scheduler is disabled so this guy is the scheduler which schedules the job on local it is disabled by default then you can say bench as a site enable scheduler and it will enable the scheduler if for some reason you are not seeing okay you added something that runs every minute but you are not seeing it running so maybe check if scheduler is active or not Side effect as in yeah, it eats up more resources, CPU resources. Uh, I think common side config. I don't know how that works. Common side work is number of work. Yeah. So you have to request them feature in the UI backend. We have the feature. Yeah, Rick, so you can say we we want this feature on our site. I don't think UI is there, but the backend part is there. They they do the same. They go into your UI. No, they don't go in the proc file. They directly do it from the desk. So there is a feature to increase workers. There is also dynamic logic. So Frappe Cloud has this dynamic logic. It scales number of workers depending on the load, etc. So it will just increasing or decreasing these things. Hmm. yeah one solution one more solution so you can batch as well as you can have more workers advanced use cases ah okay thanks for some reason the thing is not working on mine thanks no this is you have two benches running okay here you go so for some reason in mine it doesn't load but here you can see what all jobs are running which queue they belong to right long default short maybe some jobs but you can go into more detail about a run so here you can see that what job ran in this case it will be our case it will be renters.api.send what were the arguments passed? What was the timeout? So for default queue, the timeout is five minutes, right? And see, started. So some worker is doing it. These are all queued. See the same, just match it, whatever we discussed in theory with the practical here. Finished. Updates in real time, see, failed. So scheduler is scheduling jobs. This is performing. Now, coming to our last topic in background jobs, how can we put our own jobs in the background, right? So let's do that. So I'll come in the bench. Uh, Tariq, you have a very small font. Everyone in the company has smaller font than me. Like, I, 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 when, I when I joined Frappe, I used to share my screen. They said, why, why, why do you have such a large font? Just for presenting to us, right? I said, no, this is my normal font. <laughs> This is too small for me, but yeah. So what I will do is uh, bench. 
So what what site do you have? Sorry. CRM one dot local host. No CRM. Just CRM. Okay. CRM console. So I'm into the console now. I want to suppose this triggers in some validation or anything. Just I'm doing it here for the sake of showing you how it works. So there is a API called Frappe dot NQ, which will let you do what scheduler does. You take your job and give it to background workers. Yeah, Frappe dot NQ. It will put put it in the background jobs queue. So let's do that. Frappe dot NQ. Q U E Q E. The most useless spelling in the history of words, right? It could have been just Q U E U E. What is this? Q U E U uh, N Q U E U E. Yeah. You can give it the dotted path to the job. Uh, let's first create something in CRM. Uh, CRM bench. Okay. He has the whole bench open here. CRM. It is not recording, but fine. That that thing you can focus on maybe. So let's go to CRM. Okay. So this is the site. Okay. I will add it here. So there is some tool integration code, but that is fine. So just so just so we have a dotted path. That's it. Def my custom my function submits hundred invoices. Right. And then you can say pass. Right. And now I want to call this in the background. Right. So I'll copy this. Go to console. I will say, okay, this is the dotted path. CRM dot. CRM dot. Twilio dot. API dot. Yeah, this one. So here you can provide a second argument. What type of queue it is, right? You can say short. So it created a job. See, it created a job. It was enqueued at this time, and if you go back to the UI, see field. Oh, sort order is just the reverse. So this, see, you. This was the function we wanted to run in the background, right? And this were the arguments it got. And let's see the exception that happened because the job failed. So no module not CRM dot CMRM. Okay, let's fix that. So this will be just CRM dot Twilio. Again, I will put this in background. Come back here, and let's see if this. Build again. See now it finished. See, so we said okay, take this, run in the short queue, short five minute, finished. Time taken zero seconds because it's just doing nothing, right? And then started at this, ended at this. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same dotted path you give in hooks dot py or anywhere else. Yeah, yeah that was so. so yeah. Mm -hmm. Then, then there is a module. Then there is an API. Yes. So yeah, you can have something like tasks in the root. So you can have just crm dot tasks dot my function that submits thousand invoices. Okay. Okay, so now we'll discuss role permission management, and 
so role is how do you define a role basically in english but okay okay so user concept you understand right there are a list of users right and that is used for authentication right okay you are a valid user of the system you can log in with this username password but there is a second part called authorization okay whether you are allowed to access this or not whether you are allowed to access that or not right so there is a concept of roles so suppose you are the system manager right you have this role called system manager and you define that okay system managers can access vehicles as well as drivers as well as ride bookings and everything right and you can assign that role to multiple users so if you go to user list right now let's go to this and you go to roles and permission you will see you have a list of roles here that you can check right and based on the role the permission will be applied yeah access management but that is encap encapsulated in the role thing so you can apply the same role to multiple users right so if you click on any of the role let's click on this uh, system manager role a dialog will pop up that will show you what permissions this role brings right so you can see that uh, doc type you have read write create delete there was one question right there is a separate permission for submit and cancel then you have report import export print email share so you can define all this in your doc type level you can say that will create a new role will say driver he can only access what booking and vehicle list right he should not be able to see other drivers we can model that right that can be a genuine use case similarly we have use cases like okay you can only see your salary slips or you can't uh, see the account anything related so if you are in it you can't see sales invoices make sense so in this terms you will say okay i will create a account manager role and i will give it to the account users i will create a it person role and i will give it to all the it users make sense straight forward so first of all where do you define this permissions right where do you find that system manager has access to this doc type and this are the fields he has access to yeah so i'll go to role list here is the first step you create your roles here you can see whether let's open sales manager for example some roles are coming out of the box with frappe this is a, this is one of that so you can set the home page of the role you can either use that the other one in hooks.py file we had the role home page right then you can say you can restrict to domain this can be agriculture you want to restrict to accounts you can this is the domain i don't think this is much useful but this is important desk access so if you create a website user they don't have desk access yes right so they can't access this admin ui they can access the portal but they can't access the desk so if you want to create a role for maybe the customer who just has the portal access you create a role and don't give this otherwise they will access this admin panel right so similarly you have disabled so this role will be re will be removed from all users is custom custom or standard right and then there are some more settings these are like uh, not doc type level but site level so you can say search bar so if you disable this right sales manager won't have access to this search bar if you disable this they won't have access to the notification they won't even see it here right similarly you can control sidebar bulk actions v switcher in the list as well as in the form separately right so you can disable sidebar since we don't like sidebars now but yeah disable now sales manager won't have sidebar in the form this is role level settings right we are not yet in the doc type but here is you can create new roles and define this this is also customizable so if even if you ship it to as an uh, what do you say 
yeah in the app itself the user can still go and check and uncheck given they have permission to the role they have a role with the role permission whatever you want to call it yeah yeah hmm. it will still be there hmm. or exactly it is an or condition so if you give two role right to a user it manager accounts manager both the roles i give this one brings three doc types this one brings three doc types so you will get the six doc types it is not an intersection it's a union so you get all of it so if one role gives you desk ac de desk access one doesn't then what will happen will you have it or not have it is that an answer your question Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know how Frappe decide that. There might be some order. No, no. That that is now not how it works. It's just the default. Uh, when you land in desk, what will be your home page, or what will be your home page in general? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, we are coming to yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's a use use case. So what happens is, uh, suppose um, you have this standard list of roles that you want to give an employee. So whenever a new employee is on onboarded, you want to give this set of roles. You want to make him uh, script manager. You want to make him uh say website manager maybe a new engineer got onboarded right so this set of roles you want to give him so what you can do is you can cre create a group of these roles so you go back here and if you go to user list again role profiles right you can create role profiles and let's call him engineer so engineer is mm, blogger engineer is script manager website manager workspace manager and maintenance no i don't think yeah and then you hit save so you created a group of it now you can go to user and say engineer so earlier this used to be uh, as there must be yeah yeah go ahead add, i don't care but yeah so now as you can see whatever engineer like whatever we selected in the engineer role profile the group it got applied here this is easier as botan was suggesting now it is one week ago same guys that created a uh, rapper manager they contributed this feature <laughs> yeah yeah now you can so it will again union So if engineer brings two roles and the sales manager brings two roles, he will get all the four. It's very new feature. Won't not even in V15. This is developers. Modify the role profile. Yeah, it will change. Yeah, it will change because it looks like that this chalk check 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 boxes. This check boxes are fields of this, but no. Yeah. it is just a display and control but the actual thing is happening in some other table somewhere makes sense has role there is a has role table so, so this is just a ui on on top of it yeah least restrictive access union right so if you have access to server script and one brings access to client script you will have access to both no shouldn't be think about it if you have if you are both you are a sales person as well as a purchase person you need to have access to the both 
things, right? Yeah, you are the same person. So you can be a blogger, you can be a, so think of it as a distributing doc types in such a way that it makes sense for the role. So website manager, you group all the website related doc types, right? In script manager, you group all script related doc types. And when you want someone to have script as well as website, then it's easier to give multiple roles. Uh, but yeah, so we were discussing roles. And then how do we actually define this thing, right? How do we actually define that? Okay, script manager has access to read, write, delete this thing. So these are defined in the app itself, right? In the doc type itself. So what I'll do is let's uh, create a role or you can, let's create a new role called vehicle manager. Edit in full form. They have desk access. They have everything. That's fine. Save, right? Uh, so this is, uh, I don't know if anybody knows or not, if you add a role in your doc type, if you use it, right, Frappe, if it doesn't find it, it will create. Let me see. Like for example, if it is installed, it will create installing it and you told it still if the user has access to uh, edit the role they can edit it on the yeah. website yeah. and if the next time it migrates will it always set like it will reset if you have exported fixtures yeah, it like will reset if you have not exported fixtures it won't i think that is happening for the issue that i mentioned oh, yesterday yes. like it is just so it's related to fixtures either you do fixtures yeah. or you don't do so the behavior like, is different yeah it is just they are allowed to edit on the front end but every time there is yeah. an update, migration it will just right. uh, so over it, it. Yes, there is no point of allowing edit on the front end like it's the same way can we export the role permission as well role if permission is, manager role permission export, like, the permission. export the role permissions so that every time it overrides, we can just override that write a script that's what i suggest that's much easier than meddling with the because export it's, import suppose we have many roles and we are editing mm -hmm. existing roles as well as custom roles and it is allowing you to edit on the front end and it's getting overridden every time we have an update. Mm -hmm. I want to retain it somehow. Like if it is there in the app, the role permission, not the role. role permission. So do you have the fixture or not? I don't know for if the there role. is possibility for role permission in fixture. I don't no, know. No, no, role, just the role. Just the role will do? Just the role will, like this, mm -hmm. will go with permissions that, right? are not part of the role, right? It is yeah. Proper. This, this, will export this should be doc type. Test permission. So your role permissions are going away. Huh. That's not the role. a different issue. Not the role, right? Mm -hmm. I was talking about suppose you enable text access, that goes away. No, no, no. Role not that right. only limited access. Yeah, we are coming to role permission manager, but usually it is used for customizations. And that should retain. Because mm -hmm. out of your standard permissions, the manager that will see role permission manager takes precedence. Mm -hmm. That's why like but as a workaround that the, in case it's not retaining, mm. is there any way to export it to app? For example, if I'm installing no. a particular app, I want these permissions to be set by default. Not straightforward. Mm. But it should retain. Mm. That might be a workaround. We'll discuss after. Uh, I was using property setter, but now property setter is like disabled uh, in the new version. Mm. So I override the function. <laughs> There's always a workaround. <laughs> So how can I make sure that this particular role that I'm creating is packaged with my app? Because right now I don't see that it's assigned to a certain... Cool. So we created a new vehicle manager role, right? And now we want to make sure that vehicle manager can create, read, update, delete vehicles. So where do we define this? Vehicle doc type. Let's go to doc type. Vehicle. Settings. Scroll down, scroll down. Permission rules. As you can see, by default, it will say system manager can read, write, create, delete. If we remove this, okay, maybe we are logged in as system manager, so it won't work. But let's say vehicle manager should be able to, let's expand this. So submit, cancel, amend are for submittable doc types. They have no effect on normal doc types. So don't worry about it. Even if you try to give, it will say, okay, this is not a submittable doc type. Why are you trying to give the submit permission? So we don't want delete. So let's remove. So vehicle manager should not be able to delete without Irfan's permission, right? Uh, they should 
maybe they don't have email print share they can uh, the report thing they can export and see this checkbox if user is the owner so if that uh, vehicle manager created that vehicle duct tape only then this rule of permission applies so suppose you apply this rule and check this box this will say that you will be able to access only those vehicles that you created you are the owner we see the owner field in the back end right so this is that checkbox if you don't do this it will apply on everything right so if i hit save now and let's go back hit save and i go to user list let's say here uh, i remove the engineer profile for now and you see vehicle manager you click this this is exactly what we defined we said he has read write create not delete not submit not this just the checked ones make sense so now uh, where are they stored yeah yeah next next like that's the next topic yeah in the customization layer so see in the json the doc type json it added this right so whenever you give this to someone they will get this role if the role doesn't exist because trap can figure out okay this role is not there let me that's what i meant by if you are using it anywhere in your app it will create it like in json but it is better to use fixtures in my opinion hmm. yeah yeah try you want to try okay uh i don't uh, recall if it does on migrate or uh, after install but let's find out so vehicle super wiser uh, doesn't have report as well let's run migrate bench dash dash site this was uh, i didn't know 3 months ago uh, I was having a meeting with Faris. He, he said, "Do you know that this is there?" I said, "Wow, I didn't know <laughs> that if you even don't export the role, it will create it." But yeah, but yeah, it creates it with the default configuration. So if you want your own configuration, then fixtures is the way to go. We'll discuss fixtures after this. Uh, we we should have discussed in the hooks dot py file itself, but cool. Makes sense. so similarly you can add uh, more roles more permissions here as you can see so now it makes sense right this whatever you see this form is just the json talking yeah yeah you can yeah so you you have to just make sure how you are assigning the roles so mm -hmm. yeah in the standard thing this is how you do it in developer mode if you want to ship it with your app now the next part is what if you already deployed and want to manage role permissions this is standard way of doing it Hmm. No, 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 no. This is the other way around. So you go to the doc type and add the role. So the permissions live with the doc type itself. Of that, yeah. Yeah.
no so this will always be there role permissions are always in the custom layer role permission manager custom layer so suppose you now package this app you send it to some other rental company now they no longer want create access for vehicle manager right one option you add fix it in the app push it everybody installs now irfan is unhappy because he wants the create access right business requirements are different so the requirement is to only on his side he wants to change the permissions for that we have the role permission manager yeah these are the standard default roles these are you are saying okay this is you get out of the box similar erp next you get lot of default role permissions aside out of the box sales invoices account manager this that so these are default but now what do you want to customize after you have deployed this site for only that site i want to customize it right we had web page doc type it was only for that site we had custom doc types only for that site are you getting the difference standard custom app versus customizations so this is the customization part that makes it exponentially better app development experience low code no code everything is fine the power comes when you ship it and then they are still able to add new doc types customize and do stuff without deployment there is no okay i will push new update this that <laughs> but yeah let's go back understood this and now i was talking about what if you deploy erp next and now you want to customize the role permissions so you open up role permission manager role permissions manager so this is also a single page there is no list so here you have two things that you can do either you can say okay i want to manage the role permissions for this doc type right so it will show you who has access to this doc type see this is this is what we defined in the vehicle doc type right so the user will be able to see this now they can edit okay now as i said they didn't write, want write permission right so you can say uh, manager shouldn't have write permission gone only for this site this is not packaged with your app in any way they didn't go and change your json json still has right see so this is for the custom layer if even after shipping your app you want to customize it make sense you can always restore to original ones see restore these are the standard ones that come with the doc type if you click yes it will reset back and it will again have the right permission understood standard permissions go in the doc type itself you are shipping with uh, with the app then they can still use this thing to customize they don't give in standard make sense yeah after this will go one level deep literally level deep the level field <laughs> so okay level is a little bit okay suppose i have this form vehicle form right it has many fields right it has field field 2 field 3 uh check box fields and now i added this new field called audit completed question mark right and there is this requirement that says only vehicle auditor role should be able to set this field or edit this field only who which role this is a vehicle doc type vehicle auditor he, the company is has to create a new role called vehicle auditor he will have all roles as the vehicle manager but some extra so only he should be able to set this field now we are talking field level permissions not doc type level doc type level we saw okay this you can do create read update delete everything but what about just few fields right we just want to say okay only vehicle auditor should be able to check this or edit this because he is the one who completed the audit right makes sense so how do we do that now right so there is a concept of levels 
right? Up to nine, you can go. And when you say, by default, everything is zero. So this field has zero, this field has zero, this field has zero, this field has zero. So as soon as you apply this rule, it applies to all zero level fields. It means it's applying to everything. Applying to every field of the doc type. But what if I make this one? Now this will require elevated permissions. This will be handled separately. Right? This field will this you have to assign permissions to this level separately. Now what you will be able to say, like we'll see how to do it. You will be able to say vehicle auditor has a level work permission. Then you will get access to this field. Make sense? So whatever, if you make this level one as well, then also this will apply. So you can go multiple levels. Okay. Now you can come. Okay. Supervisor audit completed. So level two permission. So you can say, okay, only whenever I say that, okay, this role has level two permission, then only give them access to this field. Yeah. One is separate. This is not inheritance. So you can't say, okay, if he has two, it has, it has one. Uh, no, 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 no. Separate numbering. Yeah. This is not priority level. Yeah. 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 yeah the significance of the number itself, like the order of the number is not significant. It's just for grouping those things. Yeah. Directly give nine and do it. Yeah. Works. Everybody's every field is zero by default and we'll see where it is and how to edit it and how to do this. But theory clear. Let's do practical now. Yeah. So now I go back to doc type list uh, to the vehicle. Let's add a new field. Uh, where is it? Yeah. Check field. Audit completed. Let's bring it here. And now I'll scroll down here. Scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. Zero by default. Let's change it to one. Hit save. Go to vehicle list. Uh, okay, fine. Hooks. We did something in the hooks. Did we uncomment something? We did uncomment something. Yeah, it is looking for this. Ha. Where is that field? You don't have access because we didn't give access to anyone for the level one fields, right? Yeah. On the section itself, does it work? No, I don't think it works. It has to be a wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. No, we, we will check. We'll check. Let Let's check. Let's check. Let's check. I haven't tried it, but I should. It should. Uh, if it has a level, doesn't have a level, right? That's what I was thinking. Yeah. This is not just UI, by the way. Like behind the scene also it will check. No, you are thinking that section that appears together, right? You can set the permission on top of it. That's now not how it works. So in the back end also it has to check, right? Whether he has the permission or not. Because front end he can customize and move the field to other section. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So yeah, how do we assign permission now? So let's do first standard and then custom. So now I want to say there is a role called vehicle auditor. Let's create a new role vehicle auditor. And he should have a level one permission and you will notice what happens. This stuff doesn't matter. This should like go away, but let me just show you. So why I'm not doing 
because field level create and delete have no significance there is only two things you can do to a field you can either edit it or you can read that field two of it so it used to hide other fields but for some reason now it is not i'm running on the nightly version so maybe yeah that works there it should work here as well feature request or okay permission at level 0 must be set be- okay 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 Okay, okay. So, see, see, see what we are trying to do. We are saying that auditor has level one access. So we are telling only this field should be visible. But without viewing the form, how he'll view the field, right? So first we'll have to give some level zero permission as well. So let's give him some. <laughs> so vehicle auditor should not be able to delete or create, but he should be able to read, right? so let's move it here okay so numbers do have significance in this sense like at least the zero should be given then you can give 6 7 8 9 doesn't matter yeah where is it no i saved ah uh, yeah control save <laughs> so where is this yeah we don't have the role right so let's give ourselves the auditor role uh how am i logged in admin vehicle auditor let's go back to vehicle list now ah no celebration now yeah uh okay should have let let's just check does not have any role permission on this doc tag okay let's go back go back i hit save see jason this recording will be very useful so i can give it to the framework team go watch and fix bugs <laughs> uh, no okay let's find out what's happening here can auditor is here yeah oh let's check this the field audit completed is here see ah administrator i don't know it should work let's try come on yeah in this sense this is very useful so let's change password okay uh so this guy doesn't have access to <laughs> so let's open an incognito window uh what was it refund gaps
it depends on where you are going some direct redirect to login you can do that i'm not sure globally because it makes the login page and returns so you can write hooks yeah there are two useful hooks so, so hooks will will keep coming back to hooks uh before lo request before request and after request so after request you can check whether it is rendering the default one instead of that do yours yeah this for that okay so we'll go to user list and finally let's Mm -hmm. Which one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it will login page. Yeah, login page keeps track of where it is being redirected to. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay, some for some reason this is happening. How do we debug this now? See, because this shouldn't happen. Maybe for new roles, it should add. Why? Yeah, it. Uh, I'm. Pointing to the camera, do note this moment. We have to fix this. <laughs> so, yeah. It should have just updated it. Yeah. So, let's now see. Finally, it works. But yeah, now as you can see, I have this. Uh, see, if I remove the role permission from here, or let's do something more interesting. So what I will do is I will say uh, the auditor only has doc type list. Sorry, I'll say auditor only has level one read access. Go back, refresh. See what happened? It became read only. That's it. So if you checked role permission manager, you would have seen that what I was expecting in the doc type. So vehicle auditor. See, only read and write matter for permissions in field level. Because either you can read a field and or edit. There is nothing else. Restore. Remove the old customizations that we had. So customizations caused the issue. But it shouldn't have. It should have just added the new, newly created role. Yeah. Got it. Field level permissions. You can do up to level nine. Any questions? In this, like one more topic, user permissions is remaining. Otherwise, role permission manager is done. Parent, yeah. So the parent needs to have. Um, Sorry. 
so you won't be accessing directly child table right yeah it depends on the parent yeah but if you do dot db you can anyway access anything without uh, because mostly if you separately are accessing child rows right you have to go tap into db otherwise you will be going through the doc itself get doc the form Yeah. Does this perm level does not work? Well? Okay, certain fields of the child table itself. I don't think we have that. <laughs> yeah. Again, later makes it a little complicated because again, you have to go into each cell and row and. Hmm. Yeah, you can set script. Script is always there. Script option is always there. We don't have it by default. So think about it in this way. Framework is already like very big, right? It can't accommodate uh, all the use cases. So it gives you some, uh, what do you say? Some wires, like open wires so you can connect and add your own batteries. That's what I would call it, yeah. But yeah, then you can extend as much as you want. Customized form will come to when we have the discussion of customized will club with the server script client script etc This is clear Role permission is clear any doubts in this uh, Rewatch maybe because it's not that uh, straightforward of a topic Especially field level, but if you understand then it is very simple. I Didn't know about field level permissions for two years No use case, yeah, after I joined Fabri. Uh, not deeper, a different topic. This was the deepest. We are already underwater now. Yeah, that is user permission. That's the next topic we are going. So this was role, role based. So role and doc type. And then we also saw fields. So there is something called user permission. So here is, you also have a button here. See? So, or you can directly go to user permission list. So this is specific to a user. That was role level, right? So many users can have same role, right? So I want a specific auditor who I have good relations with to only have such permissions. So, okay, he can delete, right? Or you only have one super user, you think nobody else should be able to see everyone's salary, but the HR manager should be. They should be able to see their own salaries. So that sort of stuff can be done through here. And you can create this dynamically. So when you install ERP next, right? Uh, I recently discovered this, like since I'm learning ERP next now. So what happens is when you create an employee doc type, right? and you set the user, it will ask you whether you want to set up this user permissions so the user can set, see only their employee record, not anybody else's. So behind the scene, when you check box, it will dynamically generate this for every employee. No, there is a checkbox while you are creating an employee. That also create, also set user permissions. Right? Yeah. Clear? Yeah. So user permissions supersede role permissions. These are because even more specific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let's come back. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, you can continue in the break maybe because 
we are on low on time and we want to cover everything beyond the list yeah yeah 15 minutes of memory okay that's fine that will be one so exact so the camera knows when to take a break uh okay so i came to the user permission doc type so this is the doc type where you can apply user permission not role you won't ever learn about your role permissions go away <laughs> so here you can select a particular user right i can say uh let's say me allow which doc type this does this uh, user permission apply to uh, if i had employee i would have selected that maybe let's say user or we can say he is the guy who manages that particular vehicle for value like wherever the vehicle is this right he will be able to access those and now you can check apply to all document types right this means suppose i have an audit record vehicle audit and that is linked to this vehicle then also he will be able to see that vehicle ka audit record make sense so if i have an employee field i gave the employee access record to that particular user so i got access to my employee record and i checked check, checked this check box and if there is a salary slip linked to my employee record i will also have access to that so when you create in erp next it is done so when you uh, create the employee record it asks you whether you want to set this up for all the employees or just the employee that you created and will create this behind the scenes and this is by the way not standard right this is not going into your app why think think why why this doesn't make sense if, to go in the app why it's data specific and apps only skip schema uh, ship schema right not the data roles are fine but specific user so there are five sites all users are different right that's why this is only customization stage okay so now you can see i click view permitted documents i want to see what vehicles he has access to exactly the one we gave him access to make sense so suppose i have ride booking okay let's see order or booking where was vehicle link both see he has access to two ride orders let's check whether they are for the same vehicle right that's what i meant by salary slip and employees again i learned this two months ago yes so i'm still learning this stuff so i knew a basic idea but i knew that this link also works link field so i show up right so if i log in as uh, myself again i am lo already logged in and i go to right booking i'll refresh uh you see this yeah click this it says restrictions so this is the restrictions that is coming from the user permission that only where vehicle is one you will be able to see the right order that's what the all all doc types if i don't do that i remove that check box right i go here remove this and only apply it to vehicle right then uh, okay this is the, maybe the role brings it again you contribute uh except this no. yeah the next way we'll see permission query permission query hmm. we'll see got this point so now this is not applicable to all doc types otherwise if you do and hit save hit refresh 
and you see the restrictions again got applied right so user permissions are for users like user level and you can generate this on the fly so i have seen people having buttons that do this sort of stuff in the back end or you can say before install in the hook you can generate this right whenever install someone installs your app you create user permissions for all users in the system or you ask them what all users we saw the multi select dialog right you can use that and combine this with that so whatever we learned in maybe isolation maybe combination everything can be combined when you are actually implementing and building apps make sense so the last one is low code thing till now it was all no code no code we didn't write any code so there is this thing in hooks.py i said right we'll come back again to hooks.py many times permission query conditions so i will uncomment this vehicle uh let's say rentals dot i will tell you what how this looks like api dot get query conditions for vehicle right and i will say uh, let's create this function in api this should return a string this should return what a string so imagine what happens when a list view is rendered somewhere behind the scene frappe is doing select this columns select star. it doesn't do star i think only wherever in list view is selected it selects those brings those and renders but what if you can somehow inject your own where condition there that only select where this condition is true so here you return that condition frappe will attach this condition to the select clause and then will render the list view so here you can write python you can say okay if the records are not in if the records are not in this because it will do and so yours will all will restrict so let's try this uh what we can say there are two ways to do this uh one is the hooks wala way one is the customization way we'll come to that same that customization should also return a string that's it but here whenever it checks vehicle doc type it will call your query and here you have to return a query let's say i don't think this will work or oh, false doesn't work hmm so this is the customized way you can have a permission query uh, okay so condition should be like this where a uh, vehicle or vehicle right it will be name equal to 1 okay so now i go back to vehicle list takes zero positional arguments maybe it get something what does it get does it get user i think it gets user let's find out uh frappe dot throw will throw ha whatever it is giving us we'll find out yeah user it gives you the current user for which the permissions are being evaluated see what happened only where name is one so here you can write python you can check okay if the user is this only show them this particular set of records this is the code way of doing it if role permission doesn't work user permission doesn't work then you resort here specific to the data
No, so you can have that if the user has this particular role. So you can implement your role permission manager system using this your own if you want to. Booking. This car. Okay, wait. Booking. Order. Yeah. Better. If you just want to filter the link field, there are better ways. Better way as in uh, set query. You might have seen of them using JavaScript. Yeah, this is more secure in the sense, but what I'm telling you, the set query is useful when you have some other one field and depending on that field, you are rendering some other options here. Yeah, so I have one example here uh, in the manual. Uh, if you go to client script, uh, filtering link fields. So there is this use case where you say, you select the state based on that the district link filter should filter out uh, link field should filter out so you can see filter is applied so this can be done using simple client script where you say this frm dot set query uh, the link field you want to filter and you can return the filter okay whatever the state is that should be the state then the link will be filtered for you now now it can be done from doc type also recent right this can be done from doc type itself. Uh, let me show. Mm, let's filter vehicles. I never used it, so you will have to guide me. No, 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 no. No, Michael doesn't have a link field. Link filters. Oh, there is documentation around it. <laughs> no. Yeah, see. Yeah, in the UI itself, now you can do that. <laughs> ah, year. Hey, Jason. Uh, wait. See, it generates this code. Link filters. JSON in just JSON, <laughs> actually. So yeah, now we can go and write order. Let's check whether vehicles are getting filtered. See. You can do through script and now through UI as well. This is six, 16 beta develop branch. <laughs> uh, was it backported? No, that's why I like, I'm not telling this yet. Once it is in branches where you can access it, I will start explaining this one but yeah till then script queries or like also that it's fine does that do dynamic thing 
Okay. Hmm. Cool. New thing. This was all about permissions. Uh, okay. So the next topic we wanted to cover was, yeah. So I was telling you, uh, let's go back to the bench for a bit. So there were some folders that we didn't explore. So we'll do that. So first I'll go into the sites folder, right? And you will see there are like each one folder for each site, which we were discussing. So let's go into our irfan.caps. Uh, okay. I went into the, okay, let's do this sites folder and there are in specific logs, logs will have the logs for this particular site. Uh, indexes are, if you see, some indexes of the web routes. So if I go to web routes, so you don't have to worry about it. It's framework internal stuff, right? But what we'll do is we'll go back and we'll talk about the two important folders here. One is public and one is private. See? So each site has a public and private folder. And if you just ls any one of it, so let's do the public. It has a files folder as well as private also has a files folder, right? It also has a files files. So when we were uploading files from our website, the admin interface or anywhere, like we were uploading a file, attaching a file, depending on whether you checked the checkbox or not is private they will go in one of these folders. If you checked is private, they will go inside private slash files. If you ch did not check is private, they will go into public slash files folder. So we can verify that. So let's see. We have brand, brand new profile pic.png, this JPEG, this JPEG. They are public files, right? So they are accessible. If you have the link, you can access them. Similarly, we have private slash we have the drivers.csv that we uplet, uploaded for import and we also have the other version of brand new profile that we uploaded. Cool. So now one folder remains. So there is a backups folder in private. So why don't you think it shouldn't be in public? Why should it be in private? Backups, right? These are site backups. These are your database. This is your actual data. Whenever you take a backup, so right now I'll do ls private slash uh, backups. I have no backups, right? So when I do bench dash dash site, caps backup maybe with files. It took a backup, and now again if I do ls backups, you will see it took a backup of the database, the files, which is the public files, there's the private files, these are all zipped and then a backup of the site config. So this four, if you take it anywhere, you can re store your site in the state it was at the time of the backup. So you can see when this backup was taken, 7-3-2024 or around 2 p.m. Yeah, the config has the security key and everything. The database username, password, everything. Yeah, everything is there in the. So this is the data dump of your database. Yeah. Yeah, you can see the sizes if you want. Like the database is thirty-five kilo. Yeah. Reinstall this. Yeah, you can use this files. Then there is a bench restore command. Give the path to this file, it will restore. Yeah, if you have the backup file, you can get it back. Yeah. Yeah, there is an archive folder. Uh, when you drop a site, they don't directly like vanish. There is also a dash dash force. I think in that case, it deletes without the backup. So when you are deleting it, you can say uh, even migrate has 
a step where it takes back up first. Yeah. I don't think with uh, production mode, I guess. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Not migrate bench update. So before running bench migrate, it will take the backup. Ah, okay, correct. Migrate is an isolated thing. Um, yeah. So you can say performs an update operation on current bench without any flanks will back up, pull, set up requirements, build, run patches and restart bench. So many things. And then using specific flags will do certain actions. So you can only say only pull, right? Only build, set up requirements. Then you can combine these flags to do no backup. So that will skip the backup step. Dash dash force. Uh, so 14.5 if you have, it will force the whatever latest major version is there. Yeah, by default, I guess, yeah. It won't change the branch. Branch is the one which is used to track the version, right? So, okay. So that was bench update. Uh, ah, done. That that covers the backup and files part. Yeah. So you go into your UI. You search for background jobs. Uh, sorry, I'm so stuck at background jobs. I have to get out. Uh, download backups. You will see. And you can set number of backups. Uh, so how many backups to keep at one time? So backups. Four backups. Five backups maybe. So it will keep by five backups. And when you take the sixth one, it will delete the oldest one. Yeah. Yeah, even if you run the command, it will make sure there are only five backups. So you can download directly from here as well, the backups file. Download files backup is the file. This is the actual uh, database. See the, see the URL? It's downloading the SQL uh, dump. Yeah. get encryption key uh, so you have to tell the password to get the encryption key of this database see yeah yeah my boss uh, I think this is admin or something see I got the encryption key so one more thing is uh, suppose I have this thing right uh, we built a portal what was it at slash cars right Slash cars and we visit one of the cars which has a image maybe this one had an image no BMW had I no. yeah maybe something mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so in many cases what you want like uh, when you're building a portal page, this is mostly HTML, CSS, JavaScript, right? Web websites are nothing but HTML, CSS, JavaScript. So sometimes you may want to load your, load your own JavaScript files or CSS assets, right? Separately into your portal page. These are called static assets. They don't change. The HTML will render based on Jinja, but CSS and JavaScript don't change. So what you can do is in Frappe, you can tell Frappe that these are static assets. Serve them as static assets. So in production system, they will be served by Nginx. So quick. Otherwise, if it touches the app server, it becomes slower than that. Static asset serving is very fast in Nginx or any production setup you might have. So for, just to achieve that, you just need to do this one thing. You place your static assets in the public folder of your custom app. So I'll go into rentals. I have this public folder, see? 
you can create more folders here images icons anything uh, but by default it has created two empty folders for you css and js so here i can write my css let's say secret.css and it sets the background color to yeah let's do forest green <laughs> so now i want to use this css right so i placed it in uh, the public slash css as this css file now i want to use this in my portal page right so how do i reference this what will be the path of this right so let's go into the html so let's see if we have some hello.html uh, and i don't want to inherit from this i want to apply more my own styles so i will start from scratch yeah here i will add a, so how we how do we link css link right and then we have to give the path where is this css file located and this is where things get interesting so you might think that you could just do rental slash public slash public uh, CSS like this? No. Specifically, so what happens is behind the scene when you run bench build or like when you even you update your bench, right? All of your public assets will be sim linked to uh, let me see. Sites has a uh, assets folder here. It will create a folder with your app name and place your static assets and it will serve it from here. So now if you want to refer that in your what? So it will be this path. So it will be slash assets. Yeah. Slash the app name rentals slash then whatever folder you said you don't have to write public just secret.css okay let's add a h1 hello let's open up hello now see so this got loaded from here so in custom app, just remember two steps, place every static asset in your public folder. And then you can use this pattern of path to access it. Don't worry if you don't recall, just search for a static assets and the documentation clearly gives an example. So this is one of the very good pages of documentation I've seen <laughs> and Frappe, yeah. Yeah, we'll push it and I'll share. We are going to push and deploy it to Frappe Cloud as well. So this ugly page will get there in Frappe Cloud. <laughs> yeah. Works. You can place SVGs. So anything that doesn't change and your website is using. Even images. Suppose you have making a landing page, you are using some images, they are static, right? So you can upload them to your public folder fast. No, oh, no, no, no. This public is different than that public. No, that is not. That is that that also applies permission, etc. This doesn't have to do anything. This doesn't touch your Python app server. Usually, yeah, the proxy will just serve it. Hmm. If you want to, you are you can create an web include like that uh, once and then extend it everywhere yeah so you might want to check the latest two videos i uploaded one one is tailwind css same concept and then was htmx one is the css and javascript so you can uh, i built a i think bookshelf app using that but there i also demonstrate how you can whatever you asked for the 
dry code, right? You don't have to repeat yourself. You just create a template and that's it. Makes sense. This can be JavaScript, anything. Just remember the pattern. Like there is something called static assets and that should be used if you want to have static assets. Cool. Any questions on this? Or should we proceed? Okay. So let's do one thing. Let's push and deploy to Frappe Cloud, right? And then we'll cover other topics. So what I'll do is I'll go to my VS code here itself. I'm going to use GitHub CLI. Uh, if you don't want to do that, you can go to GitHub, create a new repository and add the remote here. But GitHub CLI makes it easy. So I'll say GH repo create, uh, push an existing local repository. Yeah, this one, rentals. And where do I want to push it? Uh, description, public. Uh, do you want to add remote? Yes. Push commits, yes. Yeah. So it will create a repository in GitHub and push my app there. And it gave me a link. So this is the link. So now our app with only one commit is here. See, we just have the initialize app, one commit. We didn't create any commit, right? So this is the, when, a, when Frappe creates a new app, it just creates one commit that, okay, this is the state where you are starting. So whatever changes we have made, right? We have not committed that. You will see that in here. See, everything is unstaged. So we can say add, uh, we should probably not add the portal. Let's delete that. The Frappe UI portal that we added. And then we can reload this. We can delete this things as well. Okay, come on. Okay, I will say feed end of day, end of day. And then I'll push. So now if I go back, see, I will have two commits. So we can check the code, whether it has the doc types and everything or not. Rentals, see, it has the doc type, the notification and everything that we created. Now we can go to Fabric Cloud to deploy this frappe cloud.com slash dashboard beta which is going to be default soon this is the new version of the dashboard that is coming and let me switch to my team so in order to deploy custom apps you need private bench right you can't deploy in a normal you can't just say new site and then deploy your custom app for that you need a bench so let's create a bench. I'll call it Dubai Bench. You can select the version of Frappe. So we are nightly, so let's go nightly. And then where do you want to, the data center, right? So let's do Dubai for the first time <laughs> and create bench. So it's it, it hasn't deployed it yet. It has created the bench. So you can still add apps. So let's add an app. So you can add, a, see the button. You can either add what is publicly available in Frappe Cloud from the marketplace, or you can say add from GitHub. And there are two options. You can either paste in the link of the repository if it is public, even if it is not yours. If it is public repository, you can paste and get the app here. But uh, if it, it is your own private app, you can say, okay, I want this. Uh, the repository is called rentals. There is a bug on this. That's what dashboard beta. Let's find it. Okay. Even better. Let's let's since our app is public, we'll just copy this link. 
paste it here fetch branches and it is validating that it is a valid frappe app uh, it is done and you can choose the branch right we just have one branch so add app to bench and you can see the rentals app is added to the bench and we'll deploy now so let's deploy okay so deploy is in progress So yeah, once this is deployed, you will have a bench and then you can create any number of sites inside it. Yeah, you will be able to see the logs. So this was the, okay. This is the new dashboard that is going to become default. Default. If you were ever used Frappe Cloud before, this might seem different. So yeah, that is the reason. So yeah, a lot of features here. So what you can say is, uh, what sites do I have? Currently it is empty because we don't have any sites. Uh, what jobs, what, what is the configuration? See, remember this server script has enabled one. So by default, when you create a private bench, it will enable server script for you on Frappe Cloud as well. And public benches, no, you can't enable because public benches are public to all. That means they are shared. Uh, so here you can add your site configuration if you want to so Frappe cloud. So you are, you are doing it from the UI, but backend it will go and add it into your site config. You can set environment variables. You can set dependencies if you have any. So Python, there's that. And you can add more regions. Maybe I want to deploy this bench to Saudi Arabia as well that I can choose. I want it in Jidda. You can add a region, right? I have some tags. Is there let's let's wait for the deploy to finish yeah it's installing frappe framework then it will install our app so let's hope it doesn't fail at that step and unlike what we created in local this will be live with uh, uh when we create the site it will give us a url where you can access it so you can just start, yeah. So, so now if we're doing the same thing in a local installation, so if I'm doing it in my own production server that I'm self-hosting, mm -hmm. um, will, what are the steps for including, for uh, for installing the app, the custom app? So then you just can use the git, git, uh, uh, no, bench get app. Okay, they can do it even if I don't have access to the internet in the... Uh, no, you will need internet app. access because your app is in GitHub. No, no, but what if it's in my, like, my local My GitHub. local, then you can give the path to your local GitHub repository. So, but the installation does not need well, yeah. internet access. Yeah. Because I noticed like a lot of actions when I'm doing from the development, it might require, like if I create a new app or something, even creating a new app, it will require connection to the internet or doing things. It might because pip install, right? It has to install packages from somewhere. Mm. That has to happen. So yeah, but, for... Yeah. For the brief period also you have to connect to internet. But if I'm installing from a local Git repository... Uh, yeah, you, so the app won't be pulled from the remote. But there would be no connection to the, no connection to the internet needed for anything. Okay, for that, okay. for pulling requirements, it will still need internet connection. Can we manage those using press? Press? The local uh, installation. Is press going to allow us to do local installation as well as... Yeah. So press, you can self-host press and then you can host your own Frappe Cloud. Frappe Cloud is open source. So whatever you are seeing here, right? You can just go to Frappe slash press. Yeah, this is whole of Frappe Cloud. Yeah, Ansible, it uses for automation. It, it has an agent also. So see. Yeah, there is a talk, yeah. Mm, no. Currently, there is only GitHub integration. GitLab, we are planning.
Ja. Hmm. Okay, now deploy successful. Uh, so you can see um, the bench got created. And now we'll create a new site. So this is a bug I can report. So it is showing bench in site list. That's confusing right for now. So, okay, this, okay. For me, this is confusing because site is, <laughs> so yeah, let's create a new site now. So site is one instance. As we have, now you understand Ben, so you know what is happening, multi-tenancy. So let's create a, let's install our app. Let's select the region, uh, I'll select the plan. So the minimum plan is $10 per month. Uh, and if you want custom apps, it is $25 per month. And there are, then there are custom, like you can buy whole servers as well, dedicated servers. So let's call it, uh, Rappe, dot Rappe cloud is available. Let's take that then. Okay. Let's create. See. If you want lead capture. Yeah, blacklist maybe. <laughs> yeah, open source, right? Uh, okay, so we can call it Trape Dubai. Yeah, now it will work. This will create a new site and then we'll just look at going to the site and see if our app is installed or not. <laughs> or we'll try to visit the hello page. That also works. Ops are in progress. That is fine. So once we have deployed, now we have like buffer zone to discuss any number of topics. I already selected it while so you can go to apps and see what apps it is installing. Site, site, site. This is site. Yeah, while I was creating a site, so let me go back and show you. This select apps. So whatever apps are on your bench, it will show. Yeah. Then create a number of sites, but let me go back to the bench. Broken. Wow. What happened? What failed? Rentals. Okay. Our fault. No module name rentals dot install. Okay, I know what happened here. We uncommented those things. Even this is ha. Ah, these are the culprits. So it tries to run after install, but there is nothing. This dotted path doesn't exist. Yeah. So fix, push. Yeah. Yeah, it's install. So that doesn't run during installation. Uh, so let's call it. What did we fix? Okay, we can cry here. Okay. We'll push and first we update bench, then we update site. So here you can just go to manage bench from right here. And you can see popped up as soon as you pushed and you can see what changed. You can view the changes. See, it shows <laughs> that we changed this and then we can deploy it and skip, skip and deploy. So there are no <laughs> active sites. Otherwise it would have automatically updated those sites as well. If you had selected it, let's see, let's wait for the update. So this time it will be fast because it will cache a lot of stuff. So this is the update cycle. You just go 
fix stuff, come back, redeploy the bench, update the site. So it was good a thing that that happened. <laughs> yeah, you can go away. It will happen. Yeah. See, a lot of stuff was cached. It's just installing apps now. Any questions on this till now? No, I'll explain why. Uh, that's a good question. So when you deploy a bench to Frappe Cloud, it will create a container, right? Docker container, and that will be your bench, right? So the view you see is just like the configuration or how the bench should look like, what apps it should have, app one, app two, app three. You deployed a bench. It will give a unique ID. It was the version one of this bench. Right, this configuration, we call this the release group in uh, press. Here you add your app, this view basically, this is this. But when you click deploy, it will create a container, like a new bench, deploy it to the server, right? And your site will live here. So a.com, b.com. Now you got an update, right? So it won't go here and update this bench. It will create a new bench, bench 02, right? With the updated apps, app update, app update 2, maybe new app got added. And now how do you update the site? So updating the site is nothing but taking this from here, moving this here and running migrate or restart or depends on what code changes you made. So that is why you can't select specific apps on the site because as soon as it is in the bench all the new code that the bench has it has so you do have the checkboxes while deploying a new bench but not in the site so that's why you might have seen somewhere uh, sometimes that even if you don't have an app in the site it still shows update right that update is available in the site and it will show prep hr is a update is going to update but it is not on the site but because in the bench it is there, it has to move to the newer version, right? That is why it's running some validations. So this is the new feature. So I was telling, right? You can define that, okay, my app depends on ERP next. So it will check whether ERP next are there or not before installing your app. So see, upload Docker image, this thing it is uploading the image and then it will run it using Docker. Yeah, as soon as it is empty, it will auto clean that. Something fails, your site are safe. Everything is safe because we didn't touch this bench. That's why even if bench deploy fails, your sites are still like, otherwise if it goes here, does something and something breaks in between, your sites also stop working. But in this case, the bench update can happen behind the scenes. Think about it. When you do it in local, you are actually pulling stuff, right? But this is doing this uh, ephemeral, what do you call it? So benches are ephemeral. I don't know what uh, good word for this is. Immutable you can call. So new benches are created instead of updating the original ones. Yeah, so it's uploading, let it upload. And then we'll see the update in our site or the site is broken so we have to create a new one let's let's drop that site till now uh, till then i will grow so let's drop where <laughs> it's us <laughs> It will show maintenance mode. So let's drop this site. So we can force drop frappe Dubai dot frappe dot cloud. 
yeah now it will drop it but let's see bench got updated or not yeah it's installing so we'll wait for that as soon as that is there site is live we are done almost so workflow builder is left and what was the other thing Uh, do you want to know about unit testing? Unit testing. Okay. It's like five ten minutes topic, but let's do that. Okay, now it is active. Create a new site, nightly, rentals, united, Arab Emirates, Frappe team, Frappe Dubai. So now since we dropped the site, the domain is again available. So this is where your site will be accessible. Okay, this should work now. So until then I can show you what all stuff it has. So you can schedule a backup from here. So you can click this and it will take a backup run the backup command behind the scene basically for you and it will show it whether it is taking offsite backups or not and you can connect your own custom domains i think someone was asking how do you connect custom domains yeah so here you can say add domain and whatever your custom domain is let's say uh, dubai.com and it will tell you what you have to do in your dns just any one of this records you add in your dns and traffic cloud will take care of other things and then you can make that your primary domain. SSL, you get free. There's SSL. Uh, I don't think so. It auto generates as of now. Local as in. So frappe framework.com. Okay, let's just finish this and we'll come to that. Okay, let's do one thing. Let's go visit the site and it asks you for login, but we can still visit the portal page. So what was that? Hello. Our site is live on the world now. <laughs> cool. No, 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 no. Uh, let's let me just share the link to that site. You can go and check. <laughs> Re-verify, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, see, that verifies it. That verifies it. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Uh, what's happening? Here? So yeah. So you can see your analytics here. Uh, right now, this is a very new site, so it won't show up. Shortly after new site. Okay. Okay. No, 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 still there. <laughs> it takes like at least five to 10 minutes to collect some analytics. Okay. So you can change your plan from here. You can see how much of compute, storage, and database you are using. So then you can have backups. I think if you click on schedule backup, it will take backup scheduled and then it takes a few minutes and then it will show up here. Similarly, you can see activity, who created this size, when, when was this updated, right? Everything like that. So backup got completed and you can see the backup is here. The backup is with files, is the database public files. So you can, the four files that we saw in the backup directory, these are the four files. Right. 
Cool. Mm -hmm. Ya. Yeah. So usually you will do that outside of Rappel level, and you will write a self script. Yeah, to copy the files and move around. Yeah, because that also you may want to push it to some second location for uh, redundancy. Mm -hmm. So usually that happens uh, in isolation because that mostly part of DevOps. So developers are lesser concerned with that. But yeah, always keep backups. That's one thing. So yeah, Dubai bench, Dubai site, Dubai everything. <laughs> But yeah, it is there. So I will share this link in Telegram. Dubai. Yeah, see, Sony doing its. Nice. It's blurry, but I have the original one. So that's fine. But yeah, I have shared the site as well with you. So yeah, any doubts in how to deploy? Uh, how to push it to GitHub, pull. So when you make JSON changes, right? JSON is nothing but the schema of the doc type, how the doc type looks, what field it has. Then you have to run bench migrate in order for that schema to propagate into the database. If you are just making Python changes, restarting bench will do, even in production. JS changes, uh, Depends if you are using bundling or like some build process, you have to run bench build. Then you can give it the apps you want to build. So it will take the bundles, JavaScript, it will process everything, your assets and keep it. So JavaScript changes mostly build. Second, if dependencies change, right? If your app, we pushed it, now the new version depends on pandas, right? At that time, you have to run bench setup requirements. So that will go and install. Traffic Cloud does all that. Uh, when you do bench update, it also does that. So if you are individually doing stuff, then that is the case. Requirements as in the pick, re pick requirements. Mm -hmm. So I have seen this uh, BG, I don't know who, who used this compile executable somewhere, they shipped it with the app. So in before install hook, they used to call that to already set up stuff. And then Frappe used to use the pip cache. That is doable, but I don't recommend it because OS difference, like every architecture has different. So normal python packages are fine so this pandas and numpy they are like c compiled so they come with a wheel and then they get built on the os itself uh, or they build a wheel something like that there is a wheel dot wheel file barely remember yeah. the version it doesn't work yeah yeah so that's why it's not recommended for some, somehow you have to connect it to some repository of Ubuntu to get the packages. But yeah, that was Rappi Cloud. We deployed, uh, we, uh, we did it. And uh, we have just a few topics remaining now. So unit testing can be done. Let's do unit testing. So unit testing is not like specific to Frappe. It's a software engineering thing. So testing is very important. If you are building more sophisticated applications, the more impact, important it becomes, right? So there are various kinds of testing, unit testing, integration testing, end-to-end -end testing. So integration end-to-end -end are almost similar. So what happens is uh, in end-to-end -end or UI testing, we use Cypress in Frappe. There is also other libraries. There is one Playwright from Microsoft. And that lets you do UI testing as in it will bring up your site. It will try clicking the button. It will say, okay, on the click of button, whether the dialogue appears or not. And that will do it automatically behind the scene. So if you are testing 
that okay whether on the cliff of button dialog opens or not right that kind of test you can write and you can put them in ci so whenever you push to github right we push this rentals to github so let's see rentals you will see uh, i don't have any green checks or anything but workflows are there let's find out why because this is running only on develop branch so we have the main branch now so let's fix it so by default fram why does framework ask then the branch it should also fix this one it asks us the branch right so it should have made this main yeah let's push it there that's not an issue pi fix branch push it uh, that's a good thing i guess because you saw what happens without the actions and now you'll see what happens with the action so see it is running something and it is running your tests in the ci in github's cloud and if all the tests pass it will do a green check otherwise it will show a red cross so yeah that you can check how, what it is doing to run that uh, this was created when we created the app this file right so you don't have to do it manually so this is uh, like the ci part but we were discussing that was integration testing so unit testing is more granular so you test one unit of code it may be a function it may be a uh, class or it may be a api you are testing right in here apis are also functions basically logic validation total amount is calculated currently or not right so let's write one or two tests and try running them so tests are important because today you implemented the total amount logic tomorrow some other developer came he made some changes not realizing that it is also affecting this logic so if you have tests written for it the test will fail and you will clearly know that okay this lo logic is broken but if you don't have tests he pushes it to production without realizing that okay it had an unintentional effect the production will break so the more test coverage you have the more confidently you can ship and lesser prone to bugs in production so in even in frappe we are trying to push like as much of code should be tested as possible it is called code coverage you might have seen that badge that appears in framework repo showing how much percentage is 51 is the fc fc1 is like recently they started adding some tests before there were no tests so. i think framework is more than 70 now 80 but it got some jump in last two years even erp next test so tests are important so i was having this discussion way back when i was in traffic clouding with aditya why why write unit tests so unit tests are not for us they are not for to prevent us from breaking our code they are for other people from for breaking our code right so we don't want other people to break our code unintentionally because you might all already know that what is the logic if it is simple enough but it's always good to have test and if you have multiple engineers then then becomes more important to have it in the ci itself right so pr is not merged without test getting passed that is in frappe so how do you write test where do you write test right so that is the final file we didn't discuss so if you search there is test driver test vehicle this file is already got created right the py file and so let's write a first a simple test uh, let's change the theme color theme which one is better ah that looks good as it look good okay squiggly lines yeah so what it does is it inherits from frappe test case which is nothing but it inherits from the standard unit testing module in python that's it and it brings some functionality but mostly it is the standard python unit testing library so here you can write your test cases and then you can use the bench run test command to run test 
and i'll show you a better way uh, so the test should start with the word test right and then i will say test uh, full name is set or not because that is one of the logics we have right full name correctly set. we are testing the driver by the way yeah so how how does this testing works so what what are you testing actually what are you testing what do you think we will test when we check whether full name is getting set properly or not so you define the first name last name if you were to check manually you will check you will set the first name you will set the last name and you will observe the full name whether it is getting set or not you will assert right that okay whether it is if it is if it isn't you will say okay no sir it is not correct if it is then correct right so same you have to do just with code and automation so here we will create a new driver set the first name and last name and check whether the full name field was set correctly or not right so for checking this library provides some functions so let's do that so i will do frappe dot new doc let's uncomment this what type of doc we want to create driver or oh, test driver we can call it test driver and we can say what what all were the required fields first name is john test driver dot last name do no. let's check driver dot json what all fields were r e q d first name license number okay last name is not required that's fine test driver dot license number any test license yeah so we'll say test driver dot they were insert you can call it right now we did we did what we had to do now how do we check so that's when uh, this unit testing library provides method on the self self dot assert equal there are a lot it, it isn't auto complete uh, auto completing because i have just opened this app so it doesn't know about frappe the vs code is not able to guess assert equal what do we want to check what what two things should be equal so test driver dot full name should be equal to what correct so you, either you concatenate it manually but usually you should hard code this because this is the exact thing it should be right so let's now run this test so there is a bunch run test so this thing right the class you are inheriting it frappe test case it automatically roll backs after running the test no this way. so usually it should be done in an environment where is no data i will do it in my local site so usually you will create a new site there you will run this test yeah yeah there might be some collisions so in this case i don't think there will be any collisions plus uh, frappe rolls back any changes done during the test automatically everything will run python stuff will run is this the data we, data is not there so we are manually creating some test data just for this test and test should be isolated as much as possible they do should they shouldn't depend on previous test or any other test mm. yeah then it, the test will fail because of some other reasons it is not our actual test failing but the way we have written the test yeah it will show the error yeah it will show the error that this failed because of unique validation so in that case what you can do is many cases you can just trun truncate the table here that dump all the previous whatever it has just then you will have a clean state before starting the test cool so how do we run this so there is a run test command bench run 
tests right i think that this site will come first uh because i never manually run from the console i'll show you the way i use okay let's see okay here is the syntax for running tests you can run tests for an entire app you can run tests for a particular doc type a module definition you can run tests with a specific path right so it is not that you just have to write your test inside that automatically created files you can even create new files just make sure they start with the test and frappe will pick them up and run so yeah let's do one thing let's run for the whole rental app that's just side in fun caps dash dash app rentals oh what did we do run test oh wait <laughs> and it will tell you that bench dash dash site or no wait testing is disabled for the site it's a good thing because if accidentally in production you run test and it meddles with the data gone that's why you have to explicitly enable it from the config it will give you the command to enable so let's run this command yeah now it will let us run the test ran one test okay right so let's now suppose some other engineer comes he went into driver.py file and added one more space in between and now you run the test failure john do is not equal to john do it has an extra space see makes sense it gives you an out nice output ran one test and it will show you how many failed one failed so now you can go and fix it push the changes test passes you go ahead and what you do is like let's write one more test so what i will do is i'll just copy this one you try to cover as many cases as possible as many branches as possible so here i will say when last name not set so i'll not set last name so this should just just be john now let's run the tests so we had a bug in our app see john none is not equal to john this so implementing the test first making them fail and then implementing the actual logic is called test driven development yeah. so now we can fix this bug let's fix and run the tests again so i'll go back uh, so we have to check right if self dot last name then only this uh, there are other ways to fix it using or etc but i'll take the simplest path here this will just be the first name so only if there is a last name then set it to first name plus last name otherwise it will just be the first name so now we run the test again passed we are happy we can go home right <laughs> done so this was unit test there is a better way uh, suppose i just want to run this test right this one so we have an extension Uh, vs code extension you go to air extension you say frappe test runner see and i already installed it you can install it and then you can click anywhere inside your test open up command palette run nearest test rapid test run, run nearest test so wherever you are nearest to that test will run so you have to set some settings here first uh, so let's go to ui settings uh, search for frappe you have to tell which site you want to run the test on so i will say irfan dot 
caps and now i'll go back let me just run this test and i don't have to type the command right it just generated the command bench dash dash site this and the dotted path and which test you are running so depending on wherever your cursor was it picked up the test and ran it and it passed uh, this is the way i run the test because it's much easier and i usually want to run the only test that i'm working on that is failing maybe rapid test runner yeah any questions on this this was just unit testing you can get complicated you can test the total amount logic uh, you can add some child items and you can check okay whether the total amount is correct or not yeah bigger projects very important product specially yeah this was unit testing you have complex logic i would su suggest you try out test driven development feels good <laughs> Yeah. Everyone's tired? No? Let's take a break, quick break. We'll have coffee and then we come back. Okay. So we missed one important hook uh, while we were covering the hooks.py file, right? So that is fixtures. So we have like come across this word twice or thrice now. But what fixtures are? So when you created a doc type, right? Suppose vehicle was created. So JSON file got generated when you were in, uh, what do you say? Development mode, right? And the doc type was not custom. And we created four or five vehicles, say, or this many drivers. And we pushed the app to Frappe Cloud. So what do you think that four or five drivers will be there? No. The drivers will be there or not. The actual data won't go, right? The data is like just the schema will go, the doc types will get created, but not the data. So suppose there is some use case, whereas we have a vehicle form and there is a field called vehicle type. This can be like sedan. What is the other one? SUV, etc. And the, we want the user to add more as well if they want, right? So we can create a new doc type called vehicle type and use a link field here. Let's do that first and uh, we'll discuss the next step then. So I'll go back to this place and go to fun.caps. And what we want is uh, a new field, right? Like let's first create a new doc type called vehicle type but you could have gone the select field if you knew that okay this three these are the only three types of vehicle that exist but whoever you give the app to they might want to create more type of vehicles so let's say rentals yeah so i'll say in settings i'll say set by user let the user set the name right and i can add a description here let, let's add a small text description hit save and now we can create some vehicle type so let's say sedan i uh, hope the spelling is correct and uh, suv let's create one more hatchback that is what it is called okay three is fine and now we'll add this as a link field to the vehicle so let's go there i will oh uh, no not duplicate this i want to add new field let's call it type and that will be a link to what vehicle type and hit save go to vehicle list and now we'll have this link field right we can say suv hatchback sedan so all these options, but even if I commit, right, I commit and push this, let me commit, uh, let's say feature vehicle type, right, if I push this, 
they will get the dog type vehicle type but they won't get these three options what if these are very common and you want to ship them with the app maybe there are types of tax codes or something like that that is the data also can be shared along with the app in that case you can write fixtures so fixtures are fixed records right so you can export this and then whenever the user installs the app he will also get the records along with the schema he'll get these three records right so we can do that using the fixture so this can be really useful if you want to do uh say country codes currency right gender notification as in they are like there is a standard checkbox so you don't need to use fixtures for that although you can but you, sh you can use the standard feature so let's see how we can export this three from this site as well along with the app so i'll go back to bench hooks.py file i will somewhere on the top let's define them fixtures and you give it a list right i'll say i want to export what you have to give the name of the doc type you want to export the records of so in this case what what will this be vehicle type vehicle type then you open up your bench you write bench dash the site whatever site you are working on export dash fixtures so if you see uh, it exported vehicle type rentals filters none so we didn't like if you don't provide the filters i will say uh, tell you how to you provide the filters it will export all the records that are in the site so if you check now the changes that happened same thing that frappe does mimic that yeah <laughs> so now you see that it exported a json file uh, it added a fixtures folder and it exported a json file called vehicle type and it has all the records and when you push it user install it this records will be automatically created for him simple export fixtures that will export the fixture so if you change more data uh, you can run the command again it will update this json file no it's part of uh, like during migration it will check all the fixtures create them yeah if you have like specific needs some conditional things that you can write in before migrate or after migrate to create Mhm. Mm mm -hmm. Yeah. No, no, you you don't do fixtures. You can set just in the default. Yeah. Mm, I have never tried that. Maybe we can let's try. what was our single doc type uh, rentals settings yeah did export they did export a single record so yeah it will work but yeah in single you can just give the default values so now you want more complicated right maybe you ex added a checkbox here that the doc type i will add a checkbox checkbox is standard looks familiar <laughs> and then hit save go back here i will say hatchback is standard suv is standard 
and now if i only want to export the standard ones right come here instead of oh, wait doing a string i do an object i say doc type is vehicle type fill filters is is standard one again run export fixtures you will see this time only two records got exported which had is standard one now it also shows what filter it is using to export the fixture if already this one exists so if there is a suv already existing it will override that yeah fixtures mean it has to be fixed so whenever even if someone changes it comes back yeah so in this case i think it makes sense let it be because it's the name we are concerned with and that remains the same but you have something like uh, gender uh, so i think gender we are not using fixtures we have an hook if it doesn't exist then only it creates it that kind of logic if you want to add if you don't want to mess with if it already exists if suv is already there don't because it will override the description as well right in that case you can in before migrate you can check and create new doc So you can give a list of dictionaries here if you want uh, to apply filters otherwise just the name of the doc type and here you can after a comma you can give another dictionary okay this is also i want as fixture this also and then it will just export it as json file ship it user installs it during migration the records will get created doc type any i don't know any more what so this is like very specific to fixtures uh there might be some places it is used some places maybe one of the engineer got interested and started using this can be yeah yeah you can't use dt there it is called doc type this is similar case of cdt cdm you can see yeah no json as big as you want but memory hmm? this is not the right way If you just want to move data from one instance to another, this is not the right way. <laughs> yeah, this can be used to for fixed records. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. JSON. Write a script that parses that JSON and imports. Yeah. Mm. Ah, nice. Yeah, write a simple one-off script because it's a one-time thing. You are just importing from Firebase. Cool fixtures is done. Yeah. So, okay, there's discussion. We can do that discussion now. Uh, So we'll start with the py file. Let's see py file. So we added this vehicle dot py file. Like it got created, and then we added our logic here, right? But when you made a custom doc type, this file was not there. So how do I still write logic? I still want to write this logic, this uh, title equal to this that in custom layer, because if there is a custom doc type feature, there should be something to attach logic to, right? So then what we can do is. let's 
first enable server script server script frappe okay and let's copy this okay yeah and then i'll go to server script in my site so server script is to py file custom doc type is to standard that means like if you have a custom doc type right you can use the server script to write your python code in the customization layer right so i can create a new server script server script as in it runs in the server so so let's give it a name set pull name it's a document event uh, there are different kinds of this so scheduler is the custom version of the scheduler hook schedule event hooks so directly from here you also you can run a scheduled event so you can say cron right 30 15 3 2 and then you can write your script here whatever send mail this that and you have document event and you can attach to it to any doc type and oddly this doesn't go away ha ah. so yeah this should go away but uh focus on this part it gives you access to the hooks so before save and then you can say so here it is not called self it will be doc so doc dot full name equal to doc dot first name you can copy over the same logic we had here but instead of doing it here we can uh, it is driver right yeah this logic i'll copy it here and i can do this trick so don't i don't have to change the name of <laughs> The other way, <laughs> yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, still. So, I don't have to change it to multiple places, but I can now remove this thing from here. And still, the full name should work, right? So, let's open up driver, add a new driver A, B, C, A, B. That comes from the server. Yeah, I added a test, but then test here it will pass. <laughs> See, because server scripts are anyways run. Which one? No, I removed it from the control role. Uh, driver dot py. I removed this. So this is coming from the server script to make sure that it is coming from the server script. This is in the customization layer. Yeah. No, 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 no. Server script will there in the they are in the site. Yeah, yeah, here. So if you want to write something to Frappe standard events, right? So this is doc underscore events from hook, but customization layer. So I can say to do before insert Frappe dot throw. Yeah, the customization on. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. See, now it will run on before insert of to do event. That is it. And this is your script. So you can have scheduler as I said. Permission query, what we had there, you can have here. Just here the syntax will be difference. You will have to set the condition variable to it. So condition will be whatever we had uh, name equal to one right yeah on a vehicle yeah this is the identical version of what we did through hooks.py file the customization realm if you will right and we have one more thing called api so what if you don't have access to the backend code 
no frappe whitelist so you, you still want to create your own custom api you can do that here so you can say my method say get emoji uh, allow guest so this is similar to passing allow guest to frappe dot whitelist and then you can write a script so here you can find an example so whatever method name you give your method will be accessible at slash api slash method slash method name and you can access the request data here and whatever you set to response it will send as a response so let's say i want to send this emoji right uh, let's allow guest hit save now this is a custom api so we can call it from bruno so this is analogous to writing a function and making it frappe dot whitelist the custom so in production side you want a api quickly do that so we can call it here instead of driver list we'll go to uh, what did we call it get see works here also it applies so if you call get doc it will check permission get list also will check permission but if you do db dot yeah it won't work still so it will still check the line by line permission so it is not like bypass everything he will be able to hit the endpoint but the script will fail if the, he doesn't have permission yeah 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 mm -hmm. usually it is not recommended to give guests access so there is an all i think all role right all role is there all so every anybody can access guest is also there uh but what i recommend is like write an api if you are allowing guest right make sure you are doing whatever needs to be done and only that data is returned otherwise they can may accidentally you might not know so usually don't uh, uh, just take the doc type name and doc type and return your own get doc with allow guest that will be <laughs> injection attacks but if you did dot db right ah then yeah yeah i should work yeah yeah depends what you have in that doc uh -huh. if you know for sure what you are doing then this time yeah. so this was the py server script right similarly we have the js and the client script. so before we go there uh, i want to tell you here this scripting right this this is not the exactly same what you can do with py file here you can't do import pandas here you can't okay that was <laughs> you can't import modules here it is restricted so we use this package called restricted python api which runs your script in an isolated environment right and only allow specific apis so frap a lot of frappe apis a lot of uh, daytime utilities json utilities are available for you but you can't say os dot open security reasons depends we use a lot of server script ourselves so we have just our own instance i don't have to push it to my app and push right we are just building some automation in our own system and it just is in that system only then we can create simply create a custom doc type two three server scripts then you only use server scripts Mm -hmm. 
so system console is basically similar to the console we go right but with similar restrictions as this so if you want to know what all is available here uh, i recently created this uh, in the manual itself you will find a cheat sheet and this cheat sheet more than 300 i guess but you can search so this is generated automatically from frappe backend so you can see if you want to play with date time you can search date so if you call this function frappe.utils.nowdate it will give you the current date in the server script right so you can bookmark this page as well if you want server script so if you want to test out again system console is always there system console you can write frappe. get all driver drivers equal to print drivers so if you want to play around with the script before applying it to server script see you will clearly see output and commit is a separate checkbox so whether you want to commit the changes to the database or not or you are just playing around yeah sql we already saw that you can play around with sql here so both mariadb bench dash dash site mariadb bench dash dash site console have the custom counterparts as well yeah if they have their own it team they want to do some customizations okay let them like train them on this so they can small validations small calculations scripts adding some custom fields they can do it on their own usually that is how it works you implement the thing and then for customization you train them okay if you want small don't don't come to us i do it stop calling us <laughs> yeah we'll see you when the contract renewal is there yeah Track as in like you want to know where the code is running and where it is. Hmm. 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 <laughs> Looking at the code, where is the where is the code? <laughs> That's the only way. <laughs> But yeah, I, with experience you can guess that okay, if it is not in the code. Hmm. 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 Yeah. So we have the client script. We we already saw it when we were copying some stuff from here. But this is similar to the JS file, and it has no restrictions, by the way. Same because it runs on the client, the same as what you write in JS script. But here you can, even if it, the doc type doesn't belong to your app you can say add custom button and then you can say let's keep it enabled so just add your frm dot add custom or let's do add set intro hello from client script right right and now i go to to do see hello from client script yeah so if you add a custom button using the so okay that should have been the first thing so suppose you have a standard doc type you still you want just two three fields right so customize form is there so this will let you customize a standard doc type right similar form view but you can add your own custom field once you have the field then you can write a client script 
if you have a button field you can write the client script and then you can write the server script so cus custom fields plus server scripts per client script can do a lot you might even not want to go to custom app development if it's just that instance you are working on and there is a package feature where if you can export the json files of this and import on other site if that is required yeah no customizations don't get over it depend bug might be but not a feature yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah it doesn't because it uh, behind the scene so if you create a custom field in sales invoice right and you want to go like your app depends on it then you can go to fixtures and export custom field custom field is a it's doc type yeah yeah now this fixture as i said right it will try to <laughs> keep it fixed hmm. uh depends you can have a staging site so you do the customizations there and then copy over the customizations to the production site if it's something small then that's fine fixtures folder there uh, it creates a fixtures folder and then each doc type you export has its own json file yeah okay so now you understand client script custom form yeah 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 sure mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. so all the data is coming from another system so the database is not here just one the ui yeah that that's the thing like that's the feature of virtual log type Mm, that depends how far you want to go so since once you check this checkbox right is virtual this becomes a virtual doc type so let's say my virtual doc type or virtual employee maybe whatever you want to call it virtual employee module rentals so there can't be vir custom virtual doc types only in development mode you can create virtual doc types and you can model the form and everything you can go to the list view if you want uh, let's go back to the form okay yeah so let's add a field called first oh, sorry employee code maybe hit save right uh, okay nothing so even if you try to create a new employee see it didn't get created it looked like it got created but it didn't because for virtual doc types there is no database table in the back end the developer has to tell where is this data coming and going from right so if even you look uh, what files got generated for this thing what was the doc type virtual employee right py file Rappe gives us this. You have to implement how it is inserted into the database. You have to implement how it is loaded. You have to implement update. You have to implement. Here, you can call your third party ERP using the requests module to update, to get list. Here, you can cache as well if you want. No, no. Uh, the name is confusing. It's your own data source, whatever source you have. 
yeah yeah if you don't implement it that means so mm -hmm. yeah so frappe when it is clicked save frappe will give the data to this method and then you choose where you are saving it your own data source so i'll show you an example uh, load from db is basically get doc right so when someone calls get doc how do you return the data yeah no no employee list get list this is get doc one one employee this is one record this is list of employees here you will return list of dictionaries so wherever you get it from frappe doesn't care but it will give you the nice ui so make sure you map the fields so whatever fields you created like uh, they will pass them even if it hit saves we hit save right it showed some success message but it won't we wasn't saving the db because there is no db insert it depends we we'll leave it up to the developer that's better you can throw here uh, we give you the base code but sometimes you wouldn't want to throw maybe you just hide the buttons yeah uh there is a button called allow user to create that checkbox you can uncheck so the add new button won't be shown to them um okay So I'll show you an example. Uh, do, do, do. Mongo DB. Yeah, this is one of the blogs that uh, made me switch from engineer to <laughs> evangelist. Uh, here, uh, see, I connect. I use the PyMongo client, right? I imported the Mongo DB. I connected to Mongo DB, right? I have a list of cars. and then i created a virtual doc type so this is version 14 hence blue then see this is the empty thing we got then i'm just getting it from mongodb so you you choose now the possibilities are endless whether you get it from an api or some third party so here i'm getting it the cars from mongodb client but in list view it feels like it is coming from frappe yeah by default in vote cache you can cache yeah so yeah he, all cred you can see this blog if you want using mongodb this is a good example okay <laughs> what is this people keep commenting <laughs> weird yeah now you understand this are virtual log types advanced feature if you quickly need ui for some data source this is very good feature yeah existing mm -hmm. yeah the ui and everything is already there just pull it and show it the ui <laughs> as the ui so some examples rq worker this is a virtual doc type you don't see an add button right so this is directly pulled from redis uh one more is the recorder this is also a virtual doc type so recorder is something that like you go into recorder you start recording it will re record every request that is coming to frappe with some analysis so let's record you can even run c profile now so let's start recording i'll go back to bruno make a request right come back uh it got recorded let's stop the recorder and now i can analyze how much time went into queries how many sql queries were made right what was the path how much time it took what's the duration it's in milliseconds i guess this is not seconds by the way uh then you can see what all sql queries run so you can analyze what is happening so this can be useful if you find that okay why is i am clicking a save button it is taking so much time right so you can analyze each query 
So you can see here it is uh, running a select cross. It is six. Then it is running one more select. Then it is rollback start transaction. You can analyze each one. And then it will give you the stack trace. See? Request headers. Yeah, it, it's nice to learn as well to debug. If you st click start then. Uh, requests. We start right now, right? You can give uh, if you just want to listen to some specific path. Right. Then if you want to record SQL, uh, C profile is like very recent edition last week. But make sure you don't keep it enabled in production. Very heavy, like intensive delay. Yeah, yeah. Just start it. Do whatever is slow or whatever you want to debug. Stop the recorder. Then analyze. Because it adds overhead. Yeah. Yeah, number of queries. See. Useful tool. Yeah, what else? Uh, huh. So let's do one thing. So real time you can watch from here. Wait. Yeah, I have a good video on real time. So, 14 minute video, you can watch, right? Let's cover workflow, works, and then we'll discuss some new products, and that will be it, I guess. Okay. So, yeah, uh, workflows, right? You want to take workflows? Or I, let me just explain and then you can show the builder you have built. Okay. Okay. So, submittable doc types, right? What are submittable doc types? What are submittable doc types? Submittable doc types are basically when you check that is submittable, then it has three states draft, submitted, and cancelled so those three are the states like right? draft submitted and cancelled is draft editable yeah editable is submitted editable no uh, cancelled yeah. no we can amend but that's a different document altogether yeah. yeah so this 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 you see right what if you want to extend this, right, read, uh, editable, not editable, but n number of states, right? Suppose in vehicle, right, uh, we have the audit thing, right? We create maybe in the right booking, right booking dot talk type. We have a draft submitted, but before that, we want say draft is fine. Okay, it's in draft. Waiting for, so driver creates this booking, right? So he fills in the distance and everything and total amount is there, but it won't be sent to customer until the auditor approves it, the account auditor. Genuine use case. The same as, okay, you did create a leave request, but unless the HR manager approves it, it won't be approved, right? So what we'll do is, uh, we'll say, initially the booking is in draft, right? Then it goes into pending approval. New state. When, when the driver's request approval, request approval, who does, does this? Driver. Whoever has the driver role, he can do it. And then once 
it is in pand- pending approval state it can either be accepted or yeah on accept it goes to accepted state reject it goes to so tell me uh, in draft whether it should be editable or not editable pending approval so it depends on the use case so we can say the approver can edit it but driver can't so we can say editable but only for approver or uh, auditor whatever we call them and then they can either accept or reject or rejected it becomes rejected then also not editable accept it gets accepted then also not editable so this non editable editable thing right that is the doc status so what will be the doc status here zero here uh zero zero for it will be zero in the back end who will be able to edit it approver but for driver it will look like it got submitted it will be read only then one one you can do that if you want you can do okay cancel but usually okay let's keep it so af- even after rejected you can edit it back and amend it hmm. yeah you can add n number of transaction transitions here you can say after acceptance from this guy it goes to a state approval from ceo higher authorities so you can have any number of levels right and for this we have a tool in frappe called the workflow builder so sharik will now take this i think and paste it here so i think we have the use case and you understand what we want to build right now so let's see let's check we have a workflow list let's create one workflow okay so i can show you what exactly this is first and then i will show what is workflow builder so the this use case you can see that these are states I'll just this draft is a state this is one state this is a second state this is third and this is fourth so we uh, and this is the action right approve accept reject these are the actions so we uh, transition from one state to another so this things are captured here as you can see there are two child tables the states and transition rules so if you will see here we will add state its doc status as he mentioned it is in draft state or submitted or cancelled uh, then these are some extra features uh, like and here allow uh, only allow edit for so the second uh, in the pending approval state here we can mention who can edit and who cannot so that is the for, for that then here we will add all the states and then here we will add all the tra- transitions from one state to another and what is the action between but it is uh, so you have the diagram and that's why it is very easy for you to understand what you want to do and which state you want to add and which transition you have to add <coughs> so so to solve this problem i built this workflow builder so let's do that so let's create a new one this is right booking we are creating a workflow for right booking doc type let's give a name approval approval workflow
So in the background, it creates a new field, which is workflow state to track what is, in which state it is uh, in, the doc, in the doc type. So now you have a clean slate, right? Let's build this workflow. The same one that you, you are seeing on the right side. So on the, just by dragging, you can add a state. So you can, there are how many states? One, two, three, four. Let's add all the states first. So, okay, let me select the state. Uh, first one is the draft state. So we don't have a draft state. So let's create one. Should we name something else? Open. New. New is fine, right? So let's create one. And new should be here. So this is in new state, which is in the docs. The status is draft. Yeah. The next one is the new. So let's create approval pending. Sorry. So to be very descriptive, we can, we can add our own. So approval pen, pending, yeah. Pending. So that was created. So there are two, then let's, so this is also in draft state, right? So this is also in draft state but only allow edit for do we have a rule okay. vehicle auditor yeah i think it is already there so now we can connect this to just by dragging those dots and should we add another yeah let's create an action also request approve 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 request okay not very handy keyboard for me but so let's select that yes. Okay, request approve. Request approval, right? Right, right. Correct. So let's select that. Request approval. So now it is very clear, right? What is happening? So let's also add the other two states, which was uh accepted approved yeah sure let's not create another uh one more rejected so these two states will be in submitted got it No, no, no. We cannot. Uh, we cannot cancel any record after uh, before submitting it. We can only uh, cancel the record after submitting it. So that is. So let's. Yeah, yeah. This is. Let me show you. Uh, so this is rejected, right? You you you're saying let's make it cancel, right? yeah but we can keep it in draft it's up to us it's up to us yeah but we can also keep in submitted i think we keep in submitted it, it will not be it will not be in draft uh, so we cannot edit that so that's why we are making it submitted yeah yeah yes
बट और यू कैन राइट योर ओन लॉजिक इन ऑन सबमिट दैट इट इज इन सबमिटेड स्टेट बट या बिकॉज यू आर क्रिएटिंग योर ओन स्टेट सो यू विल हैव टू राइट योर ओन लॉजिक ऑल्सो ऑल्सो बी पार्ट ऑफ इट then you can use this this state workflow state not doc status yeah so it is easy to keep in submitted because now you will not have to apply permissions so that's it hmm hmm so even if i try to connect this it should, it should not allow because it is in cancel state you cannot cancel before submitting so so yeah so it should be in yeah submitted yeah So this is rejected and this is approve these are the actions now this actions should be performed by who this is all so it should be auditor right like a auditor and for this reject also auditor hmm now it makes sense right the whole flow yes the same diagram we drew there it is the same diagram so that was the idea that save it now you can just activate it and it, it will work could we test this sorry okay <laughs> the color <laughs> yeah 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 we can do that also so you can see there are update so when mm so you will have to write custom logic for for that so you can only update field for the same doc yeah same doc type yes yeah that's what i'm saying different doc type it we can add but we will have to generalize it if it is possible or, or it is very generic it is uh, maybe yeah that but it is generic for you but i don't think everyone needs that feature maybe maybe we can add but by the by the way this is still in beta so we can yeah it is there yeah this workflow builder i'm talking about the the main document one you can still use yeah yeah in version 15 you can update single field only if you want to update multiple field so based on that field you can update other fields by writing some server scripts on submit you will have to do everything you will have to check in what status it is and then you will do yeah yeah you are doing you are you are playing around with only three states right and we have all the events for those so then you can uh, play around no no we cannot so you can write some conditions but uh, not the uh, logic 
So there are conditions. If you only want to show this approve button, if some fields are set, then you can write the condition here, Python, uh, but not logic. You will have to write your own logic. Yeah. Or on save because in draft state, it is on update. Mm. Yeah. Mm, maybe, yeah. I think we can add a, an action to just call an API. That can also work. Right? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, the value will be updated if you set that value here. This value you want to update, it will update when this action will be performed. Okay, dynamic. I don't think we can make it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you. I think Yeah, here I think everyone needs more features out of what it is. Yeah. This is the uh, workflow action is not created for optional states. Uh, these are, these were created for, I also don't have a whole idea about it. Suraj created this for some use case uh, to restrict um, the to show uh, so if you if you can see some actions are there from one action there are two different actions and to he don't want to show one act, uh, both of both of, both of them only one action so i don't quite remember what exactly it does but yeah, it is optional yeah yeah workflow Correct. Yeah, I think email is right now it is not for a particular action, it is for everything. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I think we're still exploring what needs to be added, more features, but Yeah. yeah, it was already there, but we we never worked on the that part. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So do we have a, another user? So let's see. I've already enabled a no, so let me save it. So let's check one right. 
cooking. So, yeah, this approved and cancelled, right? So we can also not override it or override the status field. We have a check that, uh, yeah, you can do that also. So right now, okay, this is already approved. Let's create one. So I think we are admin. Okay, so not a tipple. What is that? <laughs> uh, distance. Okay, fine. Let's save it. Uh, yeah, server so script. Yeah. yeah. So now you can see. We have an action that request approval that we created. Request approval and let's approve it. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, then we can approve or reject. Yeah, let's. <laughs> so, yeah, that's how Workflow Builder works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, same. So this is also a doc type. So if you go back. But before that, we'll see some new products, discuss the general frappevers, right? And then we can see. And then we can take questions as long as we are here. So we'll reach by time, right? No, no, we'll directly go to airport. Maybe some snack somewhere and then go. Gadi ready. <laughs> Thanks. So yeah, let's go to frappe.io. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, this website is built using Frappe Builder. I showed you the first day, right? So visually you can build stuff. This can get like, this has a responsive navigation, this, that everything works. And we got some, so we were running this context build with builder, right? So we are going to award our, uh, what do you say? Excuse me. So yeah, as I was saying, so we did a competition after launching Builder that uh, go build with Builder and we got some interesting uh, submissions. One of them is this one, uh, commit.company, the commit.company, yeah. So this is built using Builder. Right. This is for a product called Raven. Raven is also built on top of Frappe with React. The front end is React. You see, this is a Slack alternative. So you can just install it as an app and just work. So you can build this kind of products. See. A lot of Easter eggs he has written in the GIFs, but Yeah, this one and even better one. Let me just grab it from so we'll just chat. Okay, I shouldn't show the chats, but we don't discuss anything. Sophisticated, yeah. Yeah. This e-commerce site is built on Frappe Builder. It's responsive. 
and interact here as well. And this is the winner of that contest. Contest. I mean, they don't know it. We'll announce it there. But see. So let's go to card. Maybe yeah, login required. See. They have added animations. So first, you can add to cart. Again, like adding to cart requires login. And they are having a talk on how they did, did, did this and how you can also build this platform using Builder. So now you can realize what is possible with Builder. Yeah. Okay. So I think it is a great tool. I showed you the web page drop tag. That is there if you quickly want to get pages running, you don't want to meddle with styling. But if you want custom build portals, you have a new way. You can watch the video on YouTube. We did a live stream where it showed how you can approach this Figma to builder. Uh, next, let's go to framework. You know Frabe framework? <laughs> have you heard about it? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Then that's it. Then insights. I think DSH. Yeah. So this is like the build with Sushan dashboard. So it shows me what how many subscribers do I have, what are the lifetime views, marketing, and then <laughs> CMS. Uh, so these are the analytics coming from the Frappe site. So this just I created a custom doc type. So in this case, custom stuff makes sense. Just for my use case, I don't want to build an app, right? So I can just create a new custom doc type and I'm here simply getting the count of it. How many total website registrations do I have? How many emails were sent this month? What's the trend of website registrations? So this all inside does automatically. I didn't have to like manually tell it, okay, trend. It's just a type of chart there. This is coming from plausible that's a website analytics tool so it is fetching and then you give it the data to insights it will let you visualize it like this this is also coming from that same api you can have tables you can have filters here so it's, suppose you build a revenue dashboard and you want to filter just for this fiscal year or from given date to uh, date range you can do that as well and it has this cool tool so if you connect to a data source manage relationships see it knows about the link fields there is a one to end relationship between user and blogger yeah you can so since it is frappe it automatically maps if you know your data right you the data you have connected you can map here and this it will use uh, while you are creating a query or a chart, right? So suppose access log and then user, a user is already there. Yeah. So if I refresh, you'll see. This will help you visualize what is happening. So this only happens for Frappe data sources. Others you can connect yourself. You no, it's just for visualization purposes to make insights more smarter about uh, doing automatic joins for you. Yeah, yeah. So you can create a query here. Uh, you can even write SQL. You can do visually like the in video we were doing. So I can say I want this data source and then you can say mm, user list. I just want the user. User, user, user. Yeah, this is the user. And then execute query. It will give me the list of users in the database. And then I can say user count execute it will give me the count of the user i can go to visualize tab i can select number i can say total users right i can 
then add it to the dashboard you can select the dashboard maybe create many dashboards as you want you can share it with others using our read only link right so this i can share okay i have to reload this will give you a link you can copy or embed it in your workspace your frappe workspace so you build a chart and then you can embed in your frappe workspace and if i go back to the dashboard you will see total users five this is going above and beyond of current report builder capabilities right so if you check this one this is something like a server script makes a request gets the data and then inside help us visualize it this is frappe insights again everything is what 100% open source yeah. <laughs> uh, then you have some settings so you can have a telegram bot token and you can set up notifications okay if this goes about this send me a notification that is also there yeah let uh, now we have to be quick so yeah we have help desk which is our ticketing support software i uh, use it for our own support portal and pape builder uh, i have sold this enough now <laughs> and we have game plan game plan is uh this is basically uh let me show you screenshots team communication tool right so you can have teams then inside projects you can have discussions around it so anybody can start a discussion right so i have this my game plan cool yeah no yeah so rusha posted something and then people can react right and maybe let me search mine and to 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 wait yeah so you can see uh, wherever i have posted whatever replies i have done right and for example let's see this one let's refresh let me discard this yeah so people can write post they can react reply and discuss so this is for team communication so because many of us work remotely this is a good tool right to discuss to we even have polls in here so we can take polls we are like a democratic company so any decision there is a poll put up we vote one person one vote and then that decision is taken is it no not weighted one person one vote there is no okay ceo gets higher say no you pick your own work you pick your own pay uh then we have frappe hr uh the mobile thing is more interesting <laughs> right now and uh, uh let's see where is frappe hr yeah everything is open so. it's a pwa t okay how will i show this works wait uh full uh, let's just see if we can there was a mirroring option somewhere yeah there is oh let me close that <laughs> oh nice visible this is the pro frappe hr pw so this is also built on top of frappe ui and vue js so this is not a native app but this feels native right so there is something called a progressive web app so here i can check my leaves uh, as you can see everything looks fine till now and you can see what leaves uh, history of your leaves then you can request a leave from here right so you can select a leave type right privilege leave you can select the from date to date and you can save here and we approve our own leaves by the way at frappe <laughs> so again, there is no limit so technically there is but behind the scenes there is no limit 
uh, and you can see the upcoming holidays. So this is the holiday list we have in ERP next. Uh, I think it's now in HRMS, I guess. But yeah, this is that. So you can view all. Yeah, you can see Holi is there, 25 March, then Ramadan. Uh, then you can see my expenses, right? I won't go into the salary tab. <laughs> uh, so you can see, like, this is Dubai. But yeah. So you can claim an expense from here. So I can just, so this is, if you look at the doc type, it is the child table, but here we have a tailored experience, right? So you can just click, you can attach your uh, invoices, etc., right? And then just claim. And these are approved by the way, like this, we don't approve <laughs> ourselves. You can request an advance from here. Yeah. We don't have any attendance system. You work whenever you want. Flexible. Hmm. So, uh, if something depends on me, suppose I'm on support, then I will swap with someone. So that understanding is uh, in the team. So culture is built around that. Yeah. So we have open day. We have game plan. So you have to re post regular updates. I have, you have to present every alternate month. So we have open days. So you present what you did in the last two months. Any cool stuff that you did, right? So then that becomes a mutual thing that everybody will understand. That, okay, this guy is doing that. Yeah. Where? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, this is uh, built on top of Frappe UI. So, hmm? so this comes with the HRMS app. No, no, this is not a framework feature. Yeah, this is a, what do you say? HRMS, if you install, it comes with this. This is like game plan or insights, but it is optimized for mobile. Yeah, yeah, similar, mm -hmm. you can use this. So uh, some controls are Ionic, mostly Vue.js and Frappe UI. Yeah, game plan also is a PWA, see. So the game plan you saw, it has a mobile view that looks like this. Yeah, so if you visit this right, frappe.io slash hrms. Yeah, generic, generic stuff doesn't work, doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so tailored UI, the idea of this is game plan is a discussion thread, right? So you can't like go in the comment section of the doc type form and have the discussion. So it has to be tailored. It has to be, we need to have reactions in the comments. So that kind of UI and UX will come with like building tailored experiences and tailored products. Similarly, you see, right? Uh, this is in the web, but as soon as you install using this, right? Add to home screen, it becomes a PWA. Oh, we have notifications here, right? Expense claim approved, expense claim approved. Not yet. So I'm planning once uh, there is a, uh, see the number of emails. Are. Uh, yeah, I, I have to do that. I was having a chat with Rucha who built this. Uh, so now framework has a push notifications feature recently got merged. So she is now, uh, she, in this week, she will make it live in our instance and then make it available for everyone or V15. 
so you can get push notifications in your mobile so xpens got approved you got the push notification but yeah just the message or actually uh, actionable yeah you click and it will take you to the to the web uh, this pwa yeah so at least now you get some notification hr no it's in framework now so if you build your own app in your own pwa you can leverage the feature of sending push notification so once that is ready i will do the video with the complete thing inshallah yeah uh yeah cloud the it depends on so you can give it the relay server ka you can host your own relay server or cloud has already has a relay server so it automatically registers so you don't have to do anything yeah uh then we have drive which is like google drive right we are building still in the works uh healthcare is for hospitals healthcare management we have wiki uh, which powers the documentation for frappe framework and erp nix so this is just an app you can also install and ha- have your internal company documentation uh, company handbook etc uh, we have frappe lms so the course registration the courses page the batches right everything frappe school is powered by this lms and it is also going uh, rewritten in frappe ui right now it is portal pages www directory so if you want to look at a big example of working with portals and www directory www directory then lms is the app you can look at data table this is the javascript library that renders the report view ka table you see the table with the input on the top of the column this this is like an independent library you can ins- use it in your own apps as well javascript uh, bench we saw charts we also saw right frappe charts svg charting library press right press is the frappe app that is actually the frappe cloud backend frappe cloud also is a frappe framework app so you can think about it what you can do with frappe framework right whole cloud platform is running on frappe framework yeah see somewhere you'll find me yeah i'm still second yeah. but yeah they are pushing very fast so few people will come at the top now but yeah i uh, i stayed at frappe for frappe cloud i was going to leave <laughs> after my internship finished but i then stayed i enjoyed frappe cloud for 1.5 years and then again jump to other teams and then finally youtuber 